hello hello friends welcome happy friday to everyone <laughs> we made it we made it guys good morning bonk scarlet hello we got sammy with us hello to kimmer's brewery hello mickey suki welcome friends spiraled being yes good morning bong hope everyone is doing good i look like i'm gonna fly away here look at that Oof, two wings ready to go <laughs> i am sipping on coffee so maybe that's why my hair is a little crazy today sammy's like kate it's another coffee day and i was like you know what sam i kind of feel that it's like compared to yesterday total opposite day outside it's just gray and like you just want to cozy up on the couch maybe watch cook with kate <laughs> yeah did i drink some red bull bonk i should have i should have gil bonzo war chief hello rough fools you made it yeah welcome back welcome i hope everyone is doing good today i was feeling like a little bit sleepy this morning but now that i started stream i feel pretty full of life so let's get into it friends it's gonna be a fun one. Ooh, yeah fellow chef gotta love that and thank you very much for the follow wait did we work together is that what you're saying right now <laughs> did we work together okay so menu for today we got our pot pies so we're gonna do smoked turkey pot pies with more wild mushrooms i think i pulled out oyster mushrooms chanterelles and a pack of lobster mushrooms together and then we will buff it out with just some little creminis or baby bellas be really yummy and then veggies so mirepoix we'll put some peas in there for color and health and then to go along with the pot pies because we're doing little individual ones for people to take away today so we got the little tins and they even have lids they even have lids so we'll do a little salad to go with that so just some simple greens and we'll make up once again our new favorite dressing maddie matheson's green olive vinaigrette it's actually his mother-in-law's recipe that he shared with us and then for a little something sweet to balance everything out some peanut butter cookies i guess sweet and salty right crafty x-ray girl thank you very much for the two months in a row welcome back to the kitchen crew it's great to have you and hello to kame who is fully vaccinated today congratulations i'm so excited for all of you guys and thank you bonk for that so we got three awesome recipes linked there i linked the one recipe for the pie crust so i made those yesterday after stream i did a four times batch of Sally's baking addiction crust and I cut them a little bit smaller because we just have the individual tins to roll out so I got 14 crusts from that so we should be able to get seven pies no problem today and we only have four going out the door I did tell my grandparents that we would make them a couple so a couple for them and then some for Sam and myself and that's it all the pies gone second recipe i linked there is from babish i was like whoa this chicken pot pie recipe looks really really good and he gives you a couple of different things in that recipe as i was scrolling he gave you like ingredients and directions of how to prepare it for freezing for future use so that was good and then lastly from sally the peanut butter cookies hello don't peek me so recipes we just linked so we'll link them in a little bit again once we go over everything. There are three there. And hello to White Dove, I hope you're doing good. Hope everyone's doing good. Yeah, it's gonna be a really yummy menu and nothing like too crazy in depth, nothing like that. It's just like good down home cooking today, let's say. Like pot pie to me, that's something that like you would get at your grandparents i was probably with this salad and then peanut butter cookies on a friday why the heck not oh real quick before we get into today we got a follow up with yesterday is that him with these cookies i never heard nothing from that Holy kid shit. he's a mess this week sam <laughs> we gotta stay on top of him so remember yesterday we shared our birria tacos with our friend paul most hilarious review yet 
and it's not really safe for work or kids because I want to actually read it out in its whole form. So if you have kiddos watching, just tell them to go into the other room for a sec. <laughs> so we gave Paul six tacos and we let him like pay whatever he wanted for them. And that was no problem. Cooking by donation. Yeah, cooking by donation, exactly. Yeah, you've been warned. So we don't even message Paul yesterday to ask how everything was. We get a message at five o'clock after we're like all packed up and out of the kitchen. Paul says, holy fuck balls, those are good. Was taking a bite of the tacos and drinking the sauce right out of the container. <laughs> holy fuck balls. <laughs> so, so good. Huh? It was fantastic. Yeah, it was really, really good. Even Sam this morning, he's like, man, that beef yesterday was so good. So, birria tacos, thumbs up. Everyone has to try it. Don't, it's worth the hype. Don't, if you want to buy a short rib and chuck, buy all means. But the eyebrow was perfect. Yeah, yeah, we did something a bit different. So, typically, the birria tacos are made with a more expensive cut of beef. And I literally took the cheapest cut possible, the eye of round, just the trim from it, and it was delicious. So there's that too. Hello Nike, hello to Loxo Donuts with the raid. Welcome, welcome in. How are you doing today? And what did you get up to on stream? We are just getting started here, so perfect timing. And hello. So I am Kate, welcome to my kitchen. And on Fridays we cook food for ourselves. So it's myself and my husband, Sam, who's also a chef. He's here with us in the kitchen every day. And we cook food for our friends on Fridays. So we have a couple of our friends come in to pick up our pot pies that we're making them, a little side salad and some cookies. Hello, Sky Ghoul. Nike, you doing good today, my dude? Okay, well, I made the mistake of not clicking through those recipes that I linked there. Not that I really need them, just the peanut butter cookie one. And then we can uh, get our prep list together. Hello, Tony, welcome back. Hope your Friday is well so far. I'm gonna do the peanut butter cookies when you get to that point. Well, usually I do the cookies first, Sam. Um, sorry guys, I just have my... My nose is running a little bit first thing, so I'm just gonna go give it a little wipe. Hold tight. Okay, there we go. Okay, this just in. Sammy has offered to make the peanut butter cookies because he loves making cookies. So there's that. So Sammy's gonna be making the cookies with us. So I'll be the helper. I'll be in the background grabbing all the ingredients for him. It'll be fun. Yeah, he's zoinked the cookies, Suki. What is this all about? <laughs> and hi, Torino. How are you, my fellow Canadian? Just token all day and playing magic. Had a good cube draft deck, won the grand prize, nice. That's awesome, dude. That's great to hear. Okay, so first things first, I always love to do the baking first thing in the day. That way it's done. You don't have to think about it after that. And you can just focus on the rest of the savory dishes. What temp is the oven on that one? Uh, we're just getting into it, Sam. So give me a sec here, please. He's really, he's really getting into it. <laughs> so the recipe is very peanut butter cookies from Sally's Baking Addiction. And we have used this recipe once before and it's really good. Any of you have any idea how amazing you are? Blue feather, always with the nicest words. Yeah, well now you do. Go spread some love and positivity, friends. And the deliciousness. So Sally says, packed with double the peanut butter, these very peanut butter cookies boast a dense flavor, remarkably soft texture, a thick center, and a deliciously crumbly edge. Chill the dough for at least one hour to prevent spreading. So that will be perfect. So while the dough is chilling for the cookies, we'll start making our pot pie filling. 
Bad Bunny, thank you for that follow. <laughs> yeah, Nike. It's like, what is going on in here right now? So total time, one hour and 45 minutes just because of the chilling time in the fridge. It says we get 40 cookies from one recipe, so I am in. And then they bake for only, it's usually about a 10 minute to 12 minute bake on them. So we need flour, baking powder, and soda, and salt, as well as white and brown sugar. So one thing with white and brown sugar in cookie recipes is it gives it that chew, but also like the crisp exterior. So using the two different types of sugars makes pretty much the best cookie ever. What is Sammy doing with his finger? Oh, I think he was pointing at the screen reading the recipe. <laughs> Don't ask. Hi, Scoots. How are you? I was thinking. He was thinking, okay? Okay, so first thing we're doing today, cookies. Don't question the methods. And then once the dough is made, we'll ball it up and then it can chill so that right after that one hour mark, we can take it out, put it into bake in the oven. Balling and chilling. So bake for 12 minutes, and then if I scroll down, let's see the temperature. I think it's usually a 350. Yeah, 350 Fahrenheit for cookies. Oh yeah, so today guys, we're gonna be baking all of the stuff in the Traeger again, instead of using the oven inside. We've been really, really liking using that. <laughs> How much peanut butter do we need? We need two cups, 500 grams worth. Need one. He needs another one. Yes, Sammy gets to stir the peanut butter. Okay, so while the cookies are chilling, like I said, we'll do the pot pie filling because everything for the filling gets cooked first, mixed together, and then you just distribute it in each pie crust so that when you bake the pot pie, you're just baking the pastry and heating through the filling ingredients. Yeah, we love peanut butter so much. Put a lot in our smoothie. Yeah, it's a large portable convection oven. Like you can't really beat it for baking bonk. It's so dang good. <laughs> okay, so I'll just do pot pie. Do you need this recipe still, Sama? So butter, we need 230 grams. Soft. 230. Oh, hey. Yeah, use this scale. Her, her recipes are really good for scale. Okay, so for the pot pie, we will need obviously our smoked turkey, which was in the freezer, we packed it up. And then whenever that is thawed, we'll just dice it up. So the turkey, already done. And this is just a way, I thought it would be good to make this today, like after Easter, just to kind of show you guys a different way to use up turkey. It doesn't always just have to be sandwiches. Mickey, how are we? We're doing good. I'm feeling good today. Had a pretty good sleep. Pretty chill morning. Like I said, it's like pretty gray outside, so not the most wonderful day compared to yesterday, but it's perfect day for like baking and cooking and stuff like that. How are you doing over there? You're looking for a good kitchen supply website. Any recommendations? Where do you reside, North America or Europe? Okay, back to the pot pie. So our smoked turkey, our mirepoix, which is carrot, onion, celery. We'll also do garlic in with that. Uh, herbs, for sure, fresh chopped. Our peas and mushrooms. And then I have some of the stock left over from the turkey as well that we made. So that'll definitely get mixed in. I don't do a heavy like cream pot pie filling ever. I just keep it really healthy actually. So it's just the meat, the vegetables and the stock. Recipe please. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh... 
your North America US. So for a good kitchen supply website, Cutlery and More is a good one. We've used that one before, Supra. And I did hear that. Yeah, Prince Philip passed away this morning. RIP to him. That's craziness. Sorry, Sam. Thank you. Okay, and then obviously the last thing for the pot pie is the crusts. And so all we have to do is temp up the crust. Because they're small, they should temp up to be able to roll out properly pretty quickly. I'm going to assume maybe 15, 20 minutes just out on the counter and then we can roll them all out. So we'll roll out all the crusts at one time and fill them and that way everything goes quicker. So one thing with cooking to be really efficient is you want to do all of your repetitive tasks at the same time. You use lard to make the pie crust. Would duck fat be as good of a fat for that? It might not turn out quite the same, Scarlett. Just don't think that the duck fat has the same structure as like a, a more saturated pork fat. So you could try it. Like I used duck fat in the tortillas yesterday instead of shortening and that worked out really well. But for the pie crust, I would be maybe a bit worried that the duck fat wouldn't hold the structure for it as much. Okay, wait, what else? The Duke and DMX. DMX passed away? Yeah. Oh no. RIP to all of the people. That's crazy. Yeah, it's not as solid at room temp. Exactly. Exactly. Used to have a Webster on store, but thought you would ask someone more knowledgeable. What you used? Oh, you used to use it. The Webster on store. Yeah, the only one I know for like USA is Cutlery and More. I don't know if Sam knows any other ones. Webster on is one of them. Webster on? Yeah. Yeah, that's what he said he used before. So maybe there's nothing really new, but we mostly stick to the Canadian sites, right? Okay, so carrying on with our list here for our salad. So we need our greens. We're just doing really simple with greens today. And then the dressing, so the green olive dressing. And we got the proper olives as well, friends. So I'm very excited for that today. And then at the bottom of the list are peanut butter cookies, which, well, we're doing first. So there's that, cross it off, good to go. Okay, now we can get into it. I'll set up the mixer on the camera for Sam. He's just softening up the butter right now. Maybe we'll uh, stir the peanut butter for him. But yeah, once we have our list, so the way that we make our list is how we want the day to be timed out. So all of the long processes go at the top of the list so you can get them done first. And the shorter things are at the bottom so you don't really have to be stressing at the end of the day. Easy peasy. Oh, yeah, don't do drugs, kids. That's exactly it. Plug it in. Ready, Freddy? Yes. I'll mix your peanut butter for you. No. Don't need to. Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'm just gonna see everything. I will prepare the sheet pans. I'm gonna say we'll definitely need two, maybe even three, guys. <laughs> 40 cookies? That's madness. Okay, we'll potentially prep three. Because I find usually we only get 12 cookies on a pan. So we'll do two of the pans with the silicone liner on it to save some paper. Then I'll do one little parchment for the other pan. Who heckin' loves peanut butter cookies? I know we talked about this not too long ago. It's like, when I was small and you were able to still go into the bakery at the grocery store and ask for a, a cookie to have, I always asked for the peanut butter cookie. You know, when allergies weren't really a thing yet. Gingerbread. 
Gingerbread Sammy asked for? Wow. That's a pretty strong flavor for when you're like a kid. Like the, the little gingerbread man with the red sugar on top? Oh, yes. So that was probably more similar to like a speculoos for you coming from Germany. That makes sense. I'll just uh, move this over a bit so I can read chat. There you go. You like chewy peanut butter cookies? Yes, Scarlett. Yes. You lost a couple of acquaintances last year with stuff cut with fentanyl. Oh my gosh, Bong. They fell asleep and never woke up. That's really sad. It's a, it's a massive thing happening out here on the West Coast as well, like Vancouver. The rate of people like dying from overdoses is nuts. Yeah, molasses cookies. Yeah, you're good. We got the flour, baking powder and soda, salt. So it's one teaspoon each of the baking powder and soda. We got butter, white sugar, brown sugar, two eggs, two cups of peanut butter. We got vanilla. And that is that, friends. Away we go. Samuel, I'll show you how to make the best cookies ever because seriously, he's he makes better cookies than I do. So there's that. So Sammy's the cookie man on the truck for sure. Good morning, mama. How are you doing? Sammy's the cookie man. And Lauren, welcome. Happy Friday. Yeah, a free cook with Sammy. Easy, <laughs> It's really easy. Butter. So we always start by creaming the butter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that mixer is getting some work already. Your grandmama, that's so good to hear. So far the morning's been well. Do you need help there, my dear? No. So far, so good. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Yeah, we already had a visit from Doggo this morning, so that was nice. One thing that my friend posted the other day, she made cookies and she used the microwave to soften the butter. If you use a microwave to soften butter, the stuff doesn't turn out the same. I was like, whoa, I never thought of that. So that's one thing to know. Like when they say put the butter on the counter overnight, it's true. And high sensitivity. Happy Friday, hope it's full of life and Twitch's finest foods, friends, and fun. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day as well. Yeah, so Sammy's not just the smoke master, bringer of jerky, maker of nom. He is also cookie master maker. <laughs> just cookies though for some reason. Yeah, smoked cookies. Well, we're doing them on the Traeger today, Scarlett, so we'll see. We'll see. Oh, Luna looked around like, where? <laughs> She's like, I'm doggo. Silent one, this mixer is called an Incarcerum and it is from Sweden. And it's much better, in my opinion, from some of the later models of KitchenAid that I've used. It's the greatest. Oh my gosh. This guy is nuts. Oh yeah, hanging out with Sam, always a good time. There is always snacks. Are we gonna take off? I was questioning it, Mickey. Yeah, Palooza. Bad Bunny, you need better internet then. Do not settle. Ouch. What? 
I'm okay. I just hit my finger on the shelf. Don't do that. In a weird spot. Being a foodie, you might get bored after a while hanging out with Sam when he just makes jerky and cookies. Yeah, you could live off of that. I'm gonna grab some ingredients out for myself. Carrot, onion, celery, garlic. to work this mixer guys he goes for it forget. Oh man. We're making cookies with the hubby. Yeah, Sammy stream. He seriously makes better cookies than me, so I accept this. not take long at all. Oh my god. <laughs> he dropped the dough ball into my mouth. Mm. Are you a brownie aficionado? I could see it, Tony. I could really see it. Mm. Yeah, I could do brownies. Brownies are good at. He's really good at making upside down cakes too. So quick, quick breads. Yeah, quick breads. This guy, master of. Okay, I made the dough. Okay, he made the dough, guys. This is where the fun ends. Dough is complete. 
touch of flour on the floor for good measure. Always. Always. Who do you think you're working with? Well, I know who I'm working with. <laughs> You never had upside down cake? They look moist and tasty. Blueberry. It's like the first thing I learned how to make, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what my mom taught me first. That's nuts. And I've made blueberry upside down cake every time we went for blueberries ever since. Yeah, he would go pick the blueberries for the cake even. What? Okay, let's come back down to cake level. Make blackberry upside down cake. Yeah, blackberry would be good too. Raspberry, strawberry, boys, you do boysenberry. Boysen, bumble, brambleberry. It's so wholesome and fun, totally. Peanut butter cookie sandwiches with smoked marmalade in the middle? Whoa, Scarlett. What? That's how big you're making the scoop? We probably won't get 40 cookies with that size. <laughs> Wait, you are balling with this? Probably two by two if you do that. You're gonna do two and then one? Yeah. Okay, that'll be good. Okay, he's getting into it with us even. Do I make my hands dirty? Yeah, get in there. I usually do it with gloves. But it's fine, you just take care of it. You'll have it done in no time. Okay, cookies balling, and then we chill for one hour, so we'll even set a timer for ourselves, and we get them baked off right away. Yeah, did we say boysenberry? We did bonk. She's making them big, because we don't have a lot of cookie orders today, so we can make them bigger, <laughs> if it's mostly just for us. Marionberry, ooh, supra, fancy. Yum. Yeah, these will definitely be a bit longer of a bake time than the 12 minute mark, but that's okay. And we will definitely be sure to give them a little fork smash as well. Otherwise they will definitely have a tough time baking evenly. Next tray. Next tray, yes sir. Okay, yes sir, right yes sir. Then you can smash it. <laughs> Vion, I just pictured that like rolling in after dinner. Hello, Vion, how are you? I wanted to save you and I got your Discord message for a chat when I was literally going for a nap the other day. And I was like, I'm not talking to Vion right now. I'm napping. So if you have time after stream today, we could we could definitely have our chat. <laughs> I was like, I don't have time to talk right now, Vion. I'm going for a serious nap. We're doing the cross hatch. Since everyone gave me such heck last time we did peanut butter cookies and I didn't do the cross hatch. Yeah, there you go. You didn't do the cross hatch last No, time? I only did the single. Oh man. Yeah, there was almost a riot in chat. Almost a riot, almost a riot. Just the way that this dough even feels. Very nice. And she says to not use the natural peanut butters in this recipe, but we did. It doesn't quite separate as bad as some of the other ones though, I would say. The Costco creamy natural stuff. Even Sammy knows I did it wrong. Thanks, Cammy. Or Scarlett, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we can definitely chat. I know if you're asking, it's it's of semi-importance, you. I know this. <laughs> Woke up this morning and you're not sick, no complaints, that's good, Bonk. Okay, that's it, Sammy? Yeah. So we got three, six, seven, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. Recipe says yield 40. If Sam's making them, we get 15. <laughs> Hot Carl, happy Friday to you, and thank you very much for the eight month resub today. Wow, that's actually getting up there, Carl. Thank you. Amazing having you part of the kitchen crew. Okay, we have a couple more cookies. 
to cross hatch and then they're going to chill in the fridge. And that way they won't just be pancake cookies. They'll actually bake <laughs> proper. Yield 40, but they're Sam's, so they're 16. <laughs> Tonight you had tacos for dinner, homemade soft shells. Homemade with chicken fajitas, taco spice, ground beef. You went all in. So uh, did we inspire you yesterday then on our stream? And you're like, man, I have to make tacos on Friday for myself. <laughs> I love that view. Yes, all is well here, Carl. Thank you. I hope the same for you. And Williams, hi friend. Grandma flat cookies? Not again, please. Not again. I'm scarred for life still. I'll never forget those ones. I made the cookies. Oh, Sam, did you hear the little, the <laughs> chirping in the back? Just getting chirped over here. That's why I made the cookies. Wow. Tell me how you really feel. The truth, you. the truth always comes out. <laughs> Okay, let's set our hour timer. So we didn't need the second sheet pan, that's good. One hour to chill, at least, because these ones are even quite large compared to what they should be. So definitely we'll give them that full amount of time. Your friends made tacos last night, but they were vegetarian. Ah, so we did inspire them also. What did your friends think of Twitch? Are they gonna keep watching you? That was really fun yesterday. Hi, I'm here with my friends. I'm showing them what Twitch is because you know, no one really knows what it is. This is the best thing ever. So much fun. To be like, you've never heard of Twitch? Here's this. And then they just can't look away after you show them. There needs to be a cook with Kate. Twitch family potluck when things get safer. A hundred percent, Lauren. 100%. Maybe that'll be like a little thing that we can do on the food truck. For sure. That'd be really, really fun. Oh man, I'm getting so excited. Okay, let's get into the pot pie. So while Sammy was making up the cookie dough for us, I took out frozen peas. So we'll let those thaw up. That's gonna go into the pot pie mix. There's like three cups worth in there. Cook with Kate is the best intro to Twitch. Thanks, Scarlett. <laughs> I'm honored. One of your friends is from Iran. She only ever exited the country a couple of months ago. Very cool. Lots of stuff was new to her. The idea of Twitch was very alien. I could definitely see that view. Very, very cool. Okay, and then the other thing I took out while Sammy was going, I got this our leftover bit of onion from yesterday's stream when we did just the garnish. Head of garlic, and then two carrots and two stalks of celery. So that's kind of the base flavoring for the pot pie today. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just wash up this celery because it's really dirty. I don't even wanna put it on the cutting board. Yes, Williams, like time is kind of flying by now. We're gonna have the food truck in no time. Yep, so we start with mirepoix. So mirepoix is a French cooking term and it just means carrot, onion, and celery, which is the base for a lot of soups and sauces, stuff like that gonna dry it off for us. <laughs> Look at Discord. Oh, I gotta check this out then too, Vion. I can't be left out of this. That's a taco. Holy, that is loaded. I love it, Vion. Of course you rolled into here then. They don't have to look beautiful. I think it looks beautiful. I think your idea of beauty is much different compared to other people. Okay, so let's tip and top the celery. We'll start there. 
And then I like to cut down. So we can't really cut this whole stalk of celery at one time. It's just a bit much for our knife blade. So usually I like to cut it into thirds so I can really easily fit there. And then our carrot. Yeah, I think I'm gonna peel it up. Usually I try to get away with just washing it, but it doesn't look the greatest. So we'll peel this up and then we'll tip and top that as well. Yeah, that's a thick taco for sure. Best way to describe it. You want to get a little spit to make tacos al pastor on the smoker? Uh, what is the one that they make to make pastor? It's not, it's not a rotisserie, Williams. I forget what it's called, Sam knows. It starts with an R maybe? I forget what it's called. Rondo? It's like a little, it's a bowl, a steel bowl, and it just has this spit in the middle where you layer all of your meat on and then put an onion on top, usually, Swilliams, or on the bottom. <laughs> Scarlet, that is an insult. Oh, thank you, Myopic. Yeah, this is a shun. Thank you for posting the link to it, Vune. My favorite, favorite knife. Okay, keep going here. So we'll just cut this in half and peel it. Because we didn't finish peeling it yesterday. I'll take off this kind of dry outer layer as well. Oh, yes. Sorry, Bonk. Onions on the bottom. The pineapple goes on top. That's the one. Okay, there's that, and then our garlic. The Trompo King, thank you, Sam, for linking that. Trompo, I knew there was an R in there somewhere. Let's do six cloves of garlic. And that small one for good measure? Sure. Now we'll smash them all up so they're easier to peel. garlic is looking better. It's not just instantly sprouting on us after we buy it. That's hilarious, Williams. Just made an order for Dixon's this week. Boom. It's a thing of beauty. Oh, it's on sale? Nice. And yeah, welcome, Myopic. If you have any questions at all about what we do here, feel free to ask. Is This is an educational focus stream, so we're all here to learn together. <laughs> that was from Sammy. And hi, Orca. You're not like too, too late. You just missed Sammy making the cookie dough for our peanut butter cookies and balling them up and now that's chilling and we're just starting the filling for the turkey pot pie. Whoa, we really smashed that one. Okay, there we go. Oh, the mod hammer was needed. That is okay. That's the cutest little Sammy in chat ever, Vune. You're a so-so cook, but interested in improving? Oh, well, I've heard a lot of good stories from the viewers about the ways that we've been able to help them improve their cooking. So hopefully you stay a while and maybe we'll teach you something new. Just get in a little container for the garlic and we'll be putting some herbs in there with it. So I guess maybe we'll start by pressing that and then it's done. 
How significant is the difference between fresh garlic and the pre-minced stuff you buy in the jar? So I never buy the pre-minced Rafuls. There is different preservatives and stuff in it that makes it taste weird, in my opinion. If you're gonna use the whole jar in a day, I guess. But yeah, uh, fresh garlic does not even compare to that stuff. And thanks for the follow, myopic. Yeah, you can you can say which channels that you mod for. That's okay. Killer lady, thank you for the follow as well. So since we're getting into the pot pie now, how many pot pie lovers do we have in chat? I used to think of it as like such an old person dish, but I actually love them. I love them so much. Maybe because I've been making them myself. Hello, Carla. AM Souk is in here. AM Souk is eating this tonight, guys. She's like, hey, I'm gonna get that recipe for myself. Love it, AM. I'm so proud of you too. Guys, she's been asking. She's like, what do I do to get the recipe in chat? If I watch, exclamation mark recipe. You did it. You did it. What up, Blondie? Welcome. Great to see you. So many pot pie lovers. This is perfect. And hello, Speed. Stopped in for a breather and to say, hey, hello. I hope you're having a good day so far, Speed. Obviously, you are at work still. My last pie converted you? Yes. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, everything is good so far, Speed. Okay, let's just put our garlic to the side for now. And then we'll do the onion first. We'll do the onion first. So put it on the flat side. And then if you can see the lines in the onion are going this way. So that's where we'll cut. And when we're doing pot pie filling, we want the filling ingredients to be cut a little bit delicate so that we can get like a bit of each thing in each bite. We don't just wanna like go into the pot pie with our fork and get like a massive chunk of onion or carrot, right? So having it just diced a bit finer, you're able to distribute more of the flavor evenly. Oh, sweet. Getting ready to test a boat you built an engine for? How cool is that? View, why are we raising our hands? Because we love pot pie. That's why. So if you do too, please raise your hand. that last little one we'll move that over and we'll place that on the flat side since it wants to fall over anyways and then just come through nice and fine next you've never had one before you should definitely make it Vion. And OSM, hello, my wonderful people, OSM and Carla from the Joe Syracuse crew. Thanks for popping in. And Carla, your message on Discord was so adorable. Thank you for that this morning. Or if you wrote it yesterday, thank you. I loved waking up to read that. Yeah, Sammy was actually having a tough time finding the pie tins that we needed for today. 
He's like, I almost had to buy you like the pre-done bottom pie crust just so we can have a tin to put something into. <laughs> yeah, Supra. Gotta love the pot pie. Sounds good, Speed. And yeah, Sammy's here. Sammy, say hi to Speed. Hi, Speed. <laughs> have a good day at work, Speed. Stay safe, my dude. Okay, I'm gonna slice this in half. Nice and controlled. And then we'll let it fall down again. And we'll cut that fine. Okay, there's that. So we're gonna cook the onion, celery, and carrot all together. So we can just keep piling it together on the board. The ingredients you see make you think of a bolognese sauce, Orca? Well, we'll be making something like that tomorrow. Okay, let's get into the celery. Nice small pieces. Guys, I'm not even crying from this onion. What's that all about? It's like kind of wanting to make me, but no full commitment of the tears. Yeah, so I know I didn't link a recipe for my own pie for pot pies because you guys have seen us make them before on stream, but that one that we made before, so that recipe is in Discord. So if you search pot pie, you will find it come up and it is uh, typed up in PDF so you can print it out for yourself. So that's the recipe that I'm basically following today. The one that I linked from Babish is just a guideline for you guys. I thought that was the best guide to give you. Okay, let's make all of our little carrot sticks as well. Yeah, Scarlet, my knife, it must finally be sharp because I'm not crying while cutting onions. I wonder how that magically happened overnight. make all of our little sticks. Good knife skills when you make pot pie. I will say that. Good practice for knife skills. And you notice like even I don't go super fast. Yep. Carrots, I think, are my least favorite thing to cut, Bonk. Carrots are my least favorite thing to try and cut up, like, properly. Because, well, round things don't really dice up nicely. <laughs> okay, now we line it all up. Just take a little pile like that, and we'll chop through. And yeah, I think the pot pies are probably something that we'll have in a freezer for people to take from in the food truck. Probably always stock that. I like making pies and I know people love to eat them. And it's such a good like take and bake item. You take it, you take it and you bake it. You have an electric cutter for Julienne? Is this a thing, Orca? What is that? Like a food processor? Yeah, wobbly carrots are scary. Okay, let's do the celery next since it's ready. Okay. 
last pile. I'm gonna start sauteing this up in our frying pan. That was fun chopping to start the day. Really, really good. Speaking of knives, you helped cook in your friend's kitchen. Her knives were dull and slipped while you were cutting onions. Ah, Vion, that's when you know, like if you can't even cut through the onion skin, that's pretty bad. Did you give it, did you give your friend heck? I think the knives, most people's knives is what makes cooking not fun. That's what I'm thinking. Because it's not fun to prep if you have a really crappy knife. It takes forever. It's scary to use regardless. And yeah, if you don't enjoy the prep part, well then like the cooking's not going to be fun either, right? I 100% agree. Yeah, yeah. Most people's knives is what holds them back, I think. And hi, the Taz. Because if they scare themselves cutting or almost cutting yeah. themselves, they're not going to cut again. Yeah, totally. Or they do cut themselves real good. Yeah. And they don't cut again. No. Morning, How's Taz. Mr. Taz doing? Yeah, good advice, killer lady. So, pro tip. If you notice that your knife is getting dull, please take it in to get sharpened or invest in a device that you can use yourself. And watch our knife sharpening video on YouTube. Yeah, so we bought a knife sharpening jig and it's turned out to be like one of the greatest things ever. We even use it on my grandparents' knives and they're still raving about it. It's been perfect. The jig looks so cool, it's awesome. I think Cheese bought one too. I could be wrong though. I don't think so. You had an omelet sandwich for lunch? Yum, Taz. That sounds good, a little breakfast for lunch. Okay, frying pan on the stove top. Let's do a medium high heat. And then I'm just gonna fill it up with, we're gonna do olive oil today. Yeah, like our knife sharpening video on YouTube, over 2000 views on it. Insane. Okay, so medium high heat to start with our veg. Enough olive oil in the bottom of the pan to coat. I'm gonna take that sheet pan out of there. Maybe I'll actually just get it down since I don't need this. Get it down. And then we'll just grab a spoon. A spoon for mixing. Eli the goat, thanks for the follow, welcome. Yeah, it's buzzing. Happy with the whetstones you got, Vune? Keeps a better edge too compared to the electric one. Yeah, I have not heard like good things from anyone about the electric ones or even the like pull through knife sharpeners that have the two pieces of metal. Those ones are bad too. They just kind of eat up your blade and make little nicks in it over time. Okay, while that's going, we gotta grab some herbs out of the fridge. So I got some thyme and tarragon is really good with poultry and mushrooms. So I picked up some of that. And then I also have some of these leftover chopped herbs as well that I thought we would put in. Give it a little mix up. Yeah, so this uh, leftover chopped herb, it's parsley and dill and a touch of basil. So we're really herbing up the pot pie mixture today. And I think it totally needs that though. Cause pot pies can be a touch heavy. Like the pastry is really rich and the filling is usually feels rich and heavy. Yeah, exactly, Cookie. The electric ones are only good if it shares the exact same angle as the knife blade that you have. Okay, let's come in here. Also, I was picking through the tarragon at the store and they all looked like this one, 
which is like maybe half of it is usable. So we got 75% off. I was like, I'm not paying full price for this and you don't have anything else to choose from. So they're just like, okay, we'll take some money off of it then. It's like, thanks. I appreciate that. And tarragon is quite strong. So a little bit of this will go a long way. So no more than that for sure. Yeah, I guess cookie, right? It's like, I guess it's better to use than nothing at all. We'll pick off all the bad leaves or the not so nice ones, let's say. And we'll actually pick the small tarragon leaves just off of the tough stem in the center. The top parts are really nice. Anyone else ever use tarragon? I don't use it too, too often, but like I said, with poultry or mushrooms, like I love to sneak it into mushroom soup. It's so good. It's like earthy, kind of peppery. The time looked really good though this week. That is really fresh. Yeah, Thanksgiving you use it, Bonk. Whoa, tarragon vanilla ice cream? That sounds good, Vion. Okay, seems like our pan is hot. We'll just do a quick switch up. Look at that wavy oil. That's exactly what we're looking for. We'll load it up. This will probably take close to 10 minutes to cook the veggies. Off the top of your head, tarragon is an herb you can't remember the taste of, Lauren. Yeah, it's not used too often, I will say that. And thank you, Snake Eye DIY. Whoa, busy week for me. Two Twitch babies. Whew, one with Mish, one with Snake. Thank you very much for that, Snake. You know it's getting serious when we've made a Twitch baby together after all these uh, months. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like, I don't know about this, Kate. I don't know. And it already does smell good in here. How did you know, silent one? <laughs> what does your husband think of this? We really loaded up this pen. That's why we got it on medium high heat. Two more subs and you're also at nine months? Yes, Orca. Okay, there's that. Quick rinse. I think I'll just do a little toss there to get everything coated with the oil. Oh, it's raining finally. There we go. And yeah, like I said, this will take close to 10 minutes, I'm gonna say, for us to cook the moisture out of the veg and then let it get a bit golden brown. That's how we get extra flavor. So we'll just let that go. I'll kind of cook it with my ears, let's say, as we finish up these herbs over here. Don't even think about the weirdness on that one yet, <laughs> Orca. Okay, a good bunch of time for sure. And we'll pick all the leaves off of the stems. Absand, how have you been? Good to see you today. <laughs> And hello, Scat. Yeah, happy Friday to you, everyone that's watching from work. Hope you're getting ready for the weekend. He made it back. P 
peanut butter pot pie. It kind of sounds good though, doesn't it, Amson? It's like, I don't know what to think of that. Who made it back? Oh. Wait, Vune has a dog? Oh, good one. It was like, how did I not know this? <laughs> that was a good one, Vian. You had me go in there for a sec. You had a dog? <laughs> I was actually upset that I didn't know. Oh, <laughs> Carla says, I know we can pre-salt zucchini to get the moisture out before we use them. Is there anything we can do for shrooms or just need to cook the water out? I would just cook the water out. I usually don't wash my mushrooms, Carla, because I find that washing them ahead of time, they soak up all the liquid, right? So if you can just brush the dirt off with like a dry towel, that works so much better. And then, yeah, you just got to cook them enough so that the moisture comes out and then you can brown them up. What's A.M. saying up here? Can you use the stems of thyme? Can you use the stems? You can save them, A.M. Like, I don't know if you guys make soups at home or, like, stocks, but you can save them. I would put them in the freezer if you're going to do that. And then whenever you make a stock, you can just throw the thyme stems in. It will add a little bit of flavor. Not a ton, though. Yeah, a purebred doggo. <laughs> that was a good one. A cat loaf. grab a towel so I can toss that. Give these veggies a toss. They are cooking. They're starting to get some of the moisture out now though. Slowly. Just even this back out after the toss. Press it into a nice even layer. Okay, back over. Okay, now let's chop this all up really nice and fine. We'll leaf it there then. <laughs> What's the most sophisticated type of bread? The upper crust, boom. Man, if Annie was in here, he'd be so proud of you, all of you. We popped the herbs in with the garlic because those things are a little bit more delicate so they go into the veggies at the end. Now we'll do the tarragon. What's smoking outside? Sammy's got the tray on. When is it better to use a mortar and pestle to grind herbs and spices? And when is it better to slice and dice? So usually a mortar and pestle, like I said, usually is used on dry herbs and spices, Orca. 
But there are certain things like in Mexican cuisine, they'll use something called a molcajete, which looks like a mortar and pestle to like make guacamole and stuff like that. And I know in Thai cuisine, they often use one to make their curry paste. Coming back here, I could hear those sizzles. We can hear those sizzles, guys. Okay, let's switch it up. We're done with this stuff, so we'll just bring it over. Oh yeah. Okay, we got some golden brown action happening here, so I'll turn down the heat a touch now. That means that we've cooked out a good amount of moisture as well. And then we'll be transferring this just into a large bowl to mix everything together so we can get that out. Big old bowl. Oh, I'm really steaming you guys up there. Okay, I'll get that, the fan on. And then I think after we're done cooking this veg, we might as well get into the mushrooms. Grab those out. So you have a mixture of fresh, cultivated, and then some pasteurized wild mushrooms that our friend foraged last year on his property. Isn't the mortar and pestle more for herb paste? Yeah, so like in Asian cuisine, sometimes they do that, Vune. Veggie curry rice, yum, am sand. And hi, madam. The week was good. Yeah, it went by quick, but I'm feeling rested up. Ready to keep cooking. Yesterday was awesome. How was your week? Mushrooms, so we're using cremini, or baby bellas, as well as oyster, lobster, and chanterelle. Let's keep this moving. About a minute more and then we'll add the garlic and the herbs. Thank you, Breezy Anne, for the follow. Yeah, no Dutch shrooms. <laughs> Yo, if there was truffles in this, that would be the most amazing pie ever. Amazing. Okay, let's go for the pour of the herbs. So minced garlic as well as thyme and tarragon. Cook those for a few moments. Yum. It always gets so fragrant when you put the garlic and the herbs in at the end. It's like instant makes you salivate. It smells so good. You felt sick 
like most of the week your calf is super sore so you went to physio smashed your big toe with the door at physio let's just say you're glad the weekend starts oh my gosh madame sending you like healing vibes through the internet i'm sorry to hear that and yeah i hope you get on the mend and the up and up yeah that doesn't sound the best like the best start definitely not Once had the opportunity to buy whole truffles in a supermarket view. They were ridiculously cheap too. So you're wondering if there is such a thing as imitation truffles. Yes, there are different like designations, let's say of truffles. Is I believe the white truffle has the most flavor in it. The black truffle is the least expensive and it also has the least amount of flavor in it. If I watch you make it, AM says, and then we're eating it later tonight, does that count as one of my home-cooked meals for the week? Yes. <laughs> you can say that you made this, AM. There you go. There's the life hack chat. Okay, we're almost there. The garlic's just starting to brown up a bit. I think we might do... Uh, a little deglaze with some wine just because the garlic added a touch of sugar and now it's wanting to stick. I want to get this pan cleaned before the mushrooms. Grab the wine. We're using Pinot Grigio. Got the first vaccine yesterday, Absand. Nice. It's still got you feeling a bit hurt though. Ooh. Well, hopefully that feeling goes away soon. A cocktail in about an hour for Madame Bonk? I think so. Okay, pour a little drizz in. Then we'll turn this off. And then we'll come on over. Oh, I need a touch more wine. Just to loosen everything. Give that a stir around to loosen all the bitties off if you can. That's all the flavor that we want to keep. And then we'll put that into the bowl. That's a very flavorful base we just made here. I even think just like uh, for vegetarian, do this base with a good mixture of mushrooms. Be really good. Nice wild mushroom pot pie. Oh my gosh, that pan is heavy. Okay, scrape off the rest of that. And I'm just gonna give this a quick rinse, I think. Oh. We're gonna use that still for the mushrooms. So we'll just put it back on the stove top. We'll leave the wine out as well because I'm sure we'll need that. And then this we'll just set aside. So that's just gonna start to cool down. Oh wow, I'm sand. Okay, let's check out our mushies. So here are the cultivated ones. So these are Baby Bella or Cremini. And then we have in that bag, so bow, chanterelle, and lobster mushrooms is, these were picked last year and we just cut them up, put some butter in the bag. I think there's some thyme sprigs in here too and a touch of salt. And then we cook them in our sous vide at 185 Fahrenheit for like 10, 15 minutes until they're pasteurized. And then we just freeze these nice and flat. So we'll open all of the bags of the mushrooms up and then once these are nice and saute, we'll add all of the wild ones in, kind of cook the extra liquid down and then that goes in with the mirepoix too. 
And we'll dice up our turkey, put all that goodness in there. Ooh, we'll be looking real good, guys. So these are the oyster mushrooms. Yeah, they're really hard to see in the bag right now. Oh, the other one I took out. Very fancy pine mushrooms. Thought these would be good with the smoked turkey. Okay, I'm gonna take my first bathroom break right now, so hold tight, friends. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Okay, let's grab the mushroom brush. This is what we were talking about. Carla had questions. Here's our little mushroom brush that I use specifically for this. It never gets wet either. And that's why we always keep it really nice and clean too. So let's move all that over. Or actually, we'll brush them all in here and we'll put the clean ones beside so that the paper bag can hold all of the stuff we don't need. Now just go into the compost. And so this is how you keep your mushrooms from getting too wet. We don't wanna be running them underwater because they will soak up a lot of it. It's very rare to have mushrooms as dirty as that, so that you actually have to rinse them. You just found out what jollof rice is? Yeah, I don't think I've ever experienced it, Taz, but that word's been thrown around in my chat a few times too. I'd be into it. You can just saute the water off though, yes. But then you're cooking them longer and they might get more mushy, is the other thing we can think of. So yes, you can, but I guess it depends on how you want your mushroom to end up. Jollof rice Saturday, spicy fish and chicken thigh on the grill Sunday. Yes, Taz. Are you doing grilling streams weekly now? Please say yes. America's Test Kitchen did a whole video on mushrooms and water. Okay. Well, Scarlett knows then, is what she is saying. She's like, Kate, don't argue with me on this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bless you. Bless you. The token uh, two Sammy sneeze. We're streaming. I know you're not saying that. I'm just making a joke. It's okay. Don't feel bad. Is there a Canadian test kitchen? No. Canada just like plays off of everything that USA does, Amsan. Let's just say that. It's like we're continually just trying to keep up. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing if I think about it. Yeah, whenever you do a new emoji, you need a Sammy sneeze one. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is pretty much the Canadian test kitchen, Raffle Iron Chef says. Thank you, Raffle Iron. I guess that's how we can look at it, considering that we're like always testing new recipes and ways to do stuff. We are the test kitchen. Am Suk agrees. And hi, Uki, how are you doing today? Good to see you. you. Guys, me and Uki, we played really fun day of Animal Crossing together. I think it was last week already. Time's flying. So that's what we brush off the mushrooms. But then if we look at the brush, it never really gets dirty. So now we'll just kind of take all of the dirt off of there. This little brush I just picked up in Chinatown from a little Asian market. Now we got all of that in the paper bag. Now we got clean mushrooms to work with. We'll just wash off our hand. Don't think there's a European test kitchen either, Orca. But yeah, you have a master chef. I love that, Carla. Yeah, I'm so happy that we could help you. Just be better in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, you brushed the dirt off. That was free minerals, Torino says. Trust, there's still a little bit on there, Torino. A little for good measure, you know. Okay, also, just want to do a quick cross off. So our mirepoix and garlic, done. Herbs, done. We're working on the mushrooms next. Peas I will cross off as well. So these little guys, I think we're just going to cut them in little wedges. I'm not gonna slice them. We'll just cut them into nice little bite-sized pieces. Oh no, Taz. <laughs> Tefano, hello, welcome. And thank you for the raid. How are you today? Hello, Sledgehammer. Hi, friend. Yeah, a small Tef raid is here. What did you get up to? And thank you for sharing your community with us. We are just getting into prepping our mushrooms for our pot pie. Little Nail, welcome. I hope you're well today. Yeah, I miss going to an Asian food market with their narrow aisles and strange mix of fish, incense, and funky durian smells. Totally, that's totally the smells. It's like, you know where you are. Okay, so to start with the mushies, I'm just gonna go in half first. And if we place it on the flat side, we can do like a few cuts through. Let's maybe do something like that. I think that'll be nice. Cause we do know that when we cook mushrooms, they shrink a bit as well. Yum Tef, deep fried cauliflower with Bernays sauce. Everything served up for a movie night. That sounds really good. I would definitely snack on that. I love Bernays sauce. So Bernays sauce, guys, we were just using tarragon earlier for our pot pie. That's hollandaise with tarragon in it. Super good with uh, steak and potatoes as well. Cut that little stem. But we don't discard it. So the only time we have to discard a mushroom stem is maybe from a larger mushroom like a portobello where that stem could be tough and a bit woody. But for these baby, baby bellas, definitely don't need to discard the stem. It's all usable. Ooh, Alice in Wonderland, I love that movie. Tonight the movie will be a fellow streamer's makeup stream. Oh, very cool. That sounds fun. Yeah, there's actually no bear in the Bearnaise Amsand. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh man. People love deep fried cauliflower. I still have yet to do that on stream. Another really good vegetarian dish. It's like to me, fried cauliflower is most similar maybe to chicken wings. Don't let your dreams be memes, guys. Thanks for those uh, top notch words on this Friday raffle iron. Just keep going. Okay, done with those. I'll rinse my knife because those mushrooms like to stick on real quick. And my fingers. Sticky shrooms. And now we'll go back over to the stove top together. Only proper way to eat cauliflower, deep fry it, crisp it up like a chicken nugget. It is a good way to add some different texture to cauliflower, for sure. Yeah, for a while, like some wing spots were offering fried cauliflower tossed with their various chicken wing sauces. Yeah, you should try it. I actually don't mind it. I think it's pretty good. But that's the thing is like it can't be soggy. Okay, so reusing the same pan. We'll start with olive oil once again. Nice medium high heat and then I'll grab a little bit of butter. We'll put some butter into the mushrooms near the end so that it doesn't burn. But mushrooms definitely need butter. And then we still have our white wine as well. Pureed cauliflower with cream and roasted garlic. Yeah, that would make a nice sauce for sure. You can suck in the sauce. <laughs> okay, two nice nubs of butter like that. Looks like our pan is almost hot. That's good. Holds the heat. You know how cast iron is. The only way you've had cauliflower is with a cheese sauce. Even substituting the cauliflower for macaroni pasta for a cauliflower and cheese dish. Yeah, people have been doing that as well. Cauliflower pasta seems to be trending. Cauliflower is quite versatile. Maybe almost as versatile as cabbages? Maybe? Okay, that, I guess while we're waiting, I will open up some of these bags of the mushrooms. And then you know what I'm actually gonna do is get our broth out that we need for this because it's quite gelatinous right now, so we will have to get it at least heated through. Go grab that from the fridge. Cabbage is versatile? Yeah, Tef. We've had this chat a few times before on stream. It's like you can eat it raw, you can eat it cooked. There's a lot of different things. You can make soups from it. 
you can use it to roll things up in it so guys this is just our turkey stock that we made last week so like look at it's literal jello <laughs> So we'll pour that out into this pot. I think it's time for mushies already though. I can see that oil being wavy. Yeah, I've actually never done the cauliflower pizza crust because I'm a pretty serious pizza person. So like if I'm gonna eat pizza, I'm gonna eat it properly. Whoa, Sammy's going outside with the cookies. He's going out with the cookies already. Getting them baked up. You gonna bring the camera out? Yeah, just let me get the rest of these in the pan, please. Cabbage slaw is so dang good, Snake. And I've made a lot of different variations as well over the years. Just gonna give these a little toss up, get them coated in the oil. Oh, you saw Sam. Sam stole the cookies. No, he made the dough with us or for us earlier and balled it up and then they chilled in the fridge for an hour before baking so that they don't go all flat and pancake on us. And I just took them outside so that we can bake them on the Traeger. So now that those mushrooms are coated, let's do a little switch up. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, he's in the rain. Sammy's out in the rain, guys. Okay, go. You're good. He's got to get a little jacket on. Oh, I should do that, Scat. Yeah, I should go watch, see how gelatin is made. I bet it looks really weird. There's the timer for the cookies chilling. So look at that. I didn't even know. You didn't? Perfection. Teamwork making the dream work. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a great date, Tess. Going out with cookies. So those are baking at 350 Fahrenheit for 10 to 12 minutes. Probably at least 12 minutes. I think Sam did about double the size of what the recipe called for. <laughs> okay, back over. You got a timer on or I need to set it? Set a timer. 10 minutes, we'll check them. Boop. We're gonna add a little bit of salt in with the mushrooms. That'll help draw any extra moisture out. Let that go. Now let's get our stock into the pot. It's kind of hard to mix gelatinous stock. Probably not going to use all of it, I'm going to say. Let's go with that amount to start and we'll just put that on a medium low heat. Let's toss these shroomies. Can you hear that sizzle or what? Yeah, the beard keeps Sammy dry. <laughs> Yum. They're getting nice and glossy. Okay, and then I'm gonna open the mushrooms and then pour all of the juice from the mushroom into the stock pot. Cause we don't waste any of that either. And then it looks like some of these I'll have to chop a bit smaller. It's like my mushroom, <laughs> my mushroom broth. Umami mushroom broth. 
that is the natural color raffle iron of that stock so we took all of the leftover bones from the turkey from last week and made a beautiful stock from them with the pot pies in mind i was like this just makes sense I'll kind of chop those up too, I think. Actually, I don't want to use that big. I didn't like that big, guys. Yeah, look at how much moisture came out. So I'm going to turn that up, the mushroom pan now. Where's our spoon here? Wipe off that Mirapois stuff from earlier. Give this one more stir. Yummy, that smells good. Okay, this other bag with the lobster mush and chanterelle, definitely using that one. <laughs> okay, Tef. Yeah, good luck with that, and I totally know the feeling. Once again, thank you for sharing your community with us today. Sounds like you had a great stream. Take care of yourself, and hopefully we see you next time. The bag count is getting up there, 142. Yeah, we can definitely say it's getting up there, Scott. <laughs> oh, stay in there, mushies. Um, yeah, those look good. We'll quickly cut these pine mushrooms up together here. Maybe I'll just do them on my own while this is reducing. Go, go, go. So that's the cap of a pine mushroom. They have like really fluffy gills and quite a firm stem. Kind of a peppery taste. And they're really good grilled. So I think that's kind of how we package them as we grilled them up a bit. Whoa, you hear the mushrooms back here guys? So the sizzle kind of changed the sound of it. Let's start pouring in the lobbies and the chanterelles. Oh, there's even little garlicky bits in there. I'll just take out the stems from the thyme that they cooked with. Yummy. I think those were cooked with bacon fat, guys, because they smell smoky. Sometimes I'm dirty like that. Of course that's gonna be delicious in the turkey pot pie. <laughs> You'd clean our kitchen for free if we fed you? That's a pretty good trade-off. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> Chanterelles and morels, those are your two favorite mushrooms. I think I like chanterelles and oyster mushrooms the best. Okay, we'll put those pine mushrooms in. Little surprise bitty of those.
<laughs> BRB, 15 minutes, gown. Okay, let's see what we're working with. Oh, it's also time to add the butter. Let's not forget. There's a lot of liquid in there. Also, it's nice to cook these mushrooms like one more time all together. We don't want them to be too firm in the pot pie. We want them a bit softened. We don't want it to be kind of rubbery or chewy on the palate. So yeah, these will cook out for a little bit longer. And I'm definitely gonna use all this butter there. And then I still have some fresh herbs to mix in as well. Your favorites, Fong, Baby Bella, Enoki, and Oyster. Those are all really good ones, too. I always forget about, like, a very underrated mushroom is the King Oyster Mushroom. I really like that one as well. Oh, wow, Williams. Just had your first client who refused to wear a mask and had to be kicked out today. Good. Yeah, get them gone. It's like, if you cannot wear a mask by this point, it's like, I don't know who you think you are. Whatever pedestal you've put yourself on, probably come down from there. Yeah, this pan's still on medium-high heat. <laughs> Look at this, like, super buttery mushroom jus we ended up with. Heck, yeah. I'm gonna add just a little bit more wine into there too and let it reduce all together. Then we're done with that. Yeah, the King Oyster, it's really good, like cut in half and then seared up. So nice. Yeah, it's been over a year, exactly. Yo, this is looking good too. Okay, we got 10 seconds on the cookies. So we'll go and check on them together. We'll bring our hot cloth outside. Let's go. The mushrooms will be okay. We're going out into the rain. It's really storming. 325, why does he have it set at that? Oh, they're baking pretty nice though, guys. Maybe that's why he has it set, because they're quite big. Just gonna do a little switch around. definitely need I would say seven minutes maybe seven more minutes whoa it smells amazing in here it smells so good in here coming from outside okay six more minutes at least let's come back over to the stove yeah, lower temp, longer cook would be appropriate for chewy cookies. Totally bonk. You got it. Okay, crossing off the stock from the list. All we have left after this is to just dice up the turkey and bring all that mixture together for the filling. And then we gotta roll out our crusts. And then we can fill them all. And then they'll be baked to order. And then we just have to do our salad and the dressing. Oh, we're getting even more steamy. Look at all that liquid cooking out of the shrooms. Yum. I 
I do find that wild mushrooms have a much more floral aroma to them than cultivated mushrooms. Okay, we're done with the olive oil for now until it's salad dressing time. And that just gets done in a blender. Oh my gosh, we gotta raid Chef Eva B. Hello, thank you for sharing your people with us and welcome to my kitchen. Hi to cooking girl, I hope you've been good. Yep, lobster mushrooms, good one cooking girl. We got lobster mushrooms as well as chanterelles in there, some pine mushroom and we bulked it out with some cremini mushroom. Eva B, what did you get up to on your stream today? Feel free to let us know and I hope it went well. Hi, Rook. It's been forever. Good to see you. So yeah, so far for our pot pie filling, we are sauteing our mushrooms. We have our broth here just to bring it together. We are sawing our peas. And then before we did the mushrooms in the pan, we sauteed our mirepoix, so carrot, onion, celery, as well as some garlic and herbs. Yeah, wild mushroom season. It's starting up here, happy to say. So that's why we're using up all this stuff from like last fall that we had in the freezer. We're making individual little pot pies for our friends to take home today. more moments back here and then we'll mix the herbs in and then those can go into the bowl so I'll grab a cutting board for a turkey up next should be sawed nice that's starting to reduce So this container with herbs, it's parsley, dill, and basil. Really freshens things up. We add it near the end so it will retain the green color and the nice fresh flavor. with that friends just gonna turn that off come over here well yeah Eva B have a great stream sounds good yeah I hope you had a great day today too end of May cook and grill you guys start foraging for the morels we might be able to. I think we'll be t way too busy this summer to like go hit morel season on the mainland. But I would love to one day for sure. Mmm, smells really, really good. Lauren, if you and Sammy were going on a picnic, what would you two choose as the noms of choice? I will always choose like a charcuterie sort of platter. I love snacking on cured meats and cheeses and like different fruits and veggies and bread or crackers. So that would be my choice. I don't know what Sam's choice would be. I think he's just finishing up a game of Hearthstone. Yeah, <laughs> an entire brisket. <laughs> okay, let's mix this up with the mirepoix. But holy heck. We are concocting something absolutely delicious today. This ain't your average pot pie. Yum. Yeah, it looks good already, right? So we'll set that aside. And then the timer is just about to go off again for the cookies. So let's pop back out. We'll check them out.
Rainy, rain, rain. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Definitely getting closer. But I'm gonna say these are probably gonna be a 20 minute bake. That one spread out just a touch. That's okay though. Yeah, probably a 20 minute bake. So for sure, I'm gonna do another five minutes. For sure, for sure. Those be some thick, thick cookies. Five minutes on the clock. Oh, I guess to kind of like fast track our peas here. And also, so we'll be able to see just how like wet everything is. Add our peas in with as little frost as possible <laughs> and let those get warmed up by this other mixture that we are cooking yeah the Traeger door right just fires of Mount Doom dang good and smells so good already I don't even have the meat in here yet yeah the freezer burn on the peas adds the crunch that we all crave <laughs> good one okay where are my I have some leftover wings Rest is still a little bit hard. So we'll leave that there while we finish up these turkey wings. We'll pull the meat off of it. Whoa, put the crust on a brie and then you bake it. Puff pastry, yum cooking grill. That's such a good way to do it. Okay, so we have some leftover turkey wings. So we'll pick all the meat off of there and then dice it up for the mixture. And then I have a leg and a breast that was smoked. We'll chop that up too. So we're gonna take the skin off of this. Skin's not really the best thing to put into a pot pie. So first start with that. Baked brie is so good, yep. I am with you on that. I mean, any cheese in general, really, right? Okay, that's good. Now we can try and pick all the meat off, whatever we can get at. I'm just gonna use my paring knife to help along. Yeah, there's a big knuckle there. It's way easier to cut around it, I would say. Okay, what are we working with here? There's some connective tissue that we gotta get rid of. cut off that top part. We 
go. Some more on this side of the wing. Yeah, turkey wings are, they got lots of connective tissue in them compared to the chicken wing that's much smaller. But there's lots of great meat on there, so don't sleep on them. Hi, Dustin, for you. How are you doing? Wow, Scott, you just discovered last year that you like brie? Well, happy to hear that and you're now living your best life. <laughs> You'll be back in five minutes. Sounds good, Peak. Sounds good. And hello to Titan. How is your Friday going, my dude? Orca, tell me how you really feel about Brie. Sammy will be sad to hear that. He'll be sad. Okay, take, whoa, I just flung turkey everywhere. I'm gonna say take the wing apart. All right, I got messy turkey hands, so I gotta rinse them and we'll go check the cookies. Yeah, baby stuff with new stuff. Been working around the house tight and nice. I'm doing good today, man. Yeah, I'm feeling really good. I love making pot pies, so whenever I make pie on stream, it's always a great day. All right, back outside. It's really coming down. Oh, we're getting somewhere now. Holy. We still got a ways to go though, guys. Let's give this a swivel. This one too. Just starting to turn golden brown, but look at those beauties. another five <laughs> 30 minute bake time on the cookies yep holy ah. everything is wet <laughs> yeah do i live near jurassic park pretty much okay timer back on another five playing it safe yeah, going to plant a few more things in the garden. Yeah, yeah. Got to love that. And Andre, Andre Ahues. Andre Sahus, thanks for the follow. <laughs> Hungry status has reached critical. Oh, no, scat. What are we going to do about it? Okay, keep taking the skin off of these pieces. And then we'll grab whatever meat we can. If a little bit of skin doesn't come off, that's okay as well. You can see the nice pink color though that the smoker puts on to the turkey when you cook it that way. Not only flavor, but also color. There we go. Ooh, radish is a really easy one, Titan. And it's also a very quick thing to grow. So that's why a lot of people plant radish first because it's, I believe it's up within a month. It's in the first month. It's really lovely. It's one of my favorite things to grow. Okay, let's get into this part now. Just gonna cut it off where that connective tissue is. Pull this vein out. Mm 
another little bitty. <laughs> I blame sushi. Wait, what are we blaming? Yeah, we're still blaming Sammy this year. It's true, Yoon. You're like, don't let him get away with this. Yo, I never thought that a turkey wing would be so hard to pick the meat off of it. But yeah, you don't realize how much connective tissue is in there to keep all of the parts moving. <laughs> little bit of sinew up there so I kind of angle my knife to take it off I think we're good now probably have the timer going off as well one minute okay we'll wash up okay that was the really dirty part but I'll keep everything here The pastel radishes cooking girl, yeah. Yeah, I really like the French breakfast radishes. Or if you've ever had their bigger ones, but watermelon radish is so good too. Yo, that's cool, Williams. One of your favorite bakeries now gives out wooden forks and knives with the food. Okay, sip of coffee. You just saw someone using them? Yeah, they're very, very cool. Okay, timer off. Let's go back out and peek. In and out of the rain. Hopefully they're done. And then we just have the pies to bake later. Let's go a little bit closer for you guys this time. Oh, ho, ho. now they're getting a bit puffed up and golden brown. I think they still need longer though. Like now that they're at this point, it might benefit from turning up the heat a touch. So I'm gonna do 350 now. And then we'll do uh, the last five minutes and we should be good, friends. So I'm gonna go back in. Three jumping dots? What? Oh, did it? Oh. <laughs> Orca knows. She's like, oh no. Okay, I'm just gonna bring the filling bowl beside me and we'll quickly dice up this turkey that we've already got for ourselves. And once again, for a pot pie, you want it nice bite size. Also don't want to cut it too small though that you're like, don't really know what you're eating. mix of light and dark meat is is proper for a pot pie so 
so that can get put into there. We'll grab the legs next. Guys, my, uh, my apron is deciding to be squeaky today. I think it's because of the rain. We've been good for a while. Now she's squeaking away. We're back on the basketball court. Really, Williams, you did all dark meat once in a pot pie and it seemed like almost too much. Well, that's good to know. I would have never really thought that was a thing, but thank you for that. Keyword there was almost. Yeah, yeah. almost. <laughs> so once again, we'll take all of the skin off and then we'll get it off of the bone. And dice it up. I'm back and it's looking good. Welcome back, peek me. Yeah, turkey skin, Bigsby. <laughs> yeah, he still loved it. But now you still, you just make a little point to have a good mixture of both things. Heartless Angelic, thank you for the follow and welcome in. Hope you're having a great day. That was a good little piece of connective tissue to take out. Okay. Ah, you have to drive home. I think we'll still be on. We'll probably still be on, Williams. so I hope you have a safe drive. And thanks for hanging out with us while you could. Okay, that's pretty stringy, so I'm just gonna cut it off. With our handy paring knife here. Same with this little piece on the end. But we really want to try to use like as much meat as possible off of the bones. All right. I'm gonna kind of just peel this apart into the different sections so we can see a little bit closer what we're working with. Whoa, what was that? Like a little thing swinging around. <laughs> Cause yeah, there's a bit more connective stuff in the thigh. Like you see me pulling out, there's some veins and stuff like that in between those different cuts. Oh, we gotta go. I'm uh, getting my steps today, friends. It's making you want to go grab a turkey sandwich, Lauren? Good. That means I'm doing something right. Okay, hopefully those cookies are done. Let's go take a peek. We're sneaking a peek. Oh, those are looking more like it. Switch that one onto the top. Switch this other one back to the bottom. 
not get quite the same coloring. And then a couple more minutes. Very close though. Another four. Small amount of time. Four minutes on the clock. Perfect size bonk for a cookie sandwich. Oh, I don't know why I switched to that. It was supposed to be this. Welcome back to our messy turkey area. Okay, that all looks good. I don't know what this is here, so we'll get rid of that. all that together got a little bit more here and then this is actually part of a turkey breast so the top part where it connects to the wing so there's some little sinewy bits up top here that I'll get rid of that part of the tender there's always a bit of stuff running through just discard that and this I'm just gonna cut that way and there we go should be good take that tender out yum we'll push all of that over should be good with the paring knife for the next little bit. Two minutes on the clock, so we'll start on this stuff. We'll just do little strips so that we can dice it afterwards. like that a minute and a half <laughs> <View. laughs> you always want more tacos that's the tough part about making your own tacos is you always know if you made leftovers that it's like it's there like i think i need some more <laughs> so cute okay cookie time i'm just gonna go grab them and we'll let them cool so i'll set up the trivets for us spread them out a little bit of water here on the counter from our thawing peas okay that'll be good all right to turn that off i'll be right back friends They're good. Oh yeah. Those look perfect. Hello. It's okay. Birdies are fighting. Let's turn off the Traeger for a bit. I'm coming in. 
with fresh baked cookies. Oh my gosh, the raindrops hitting the sheep pen. Ah, Sammy, let me in. Let me in. Check it out. Mm -mm. Yum and yum. Not small cookies, that's for sure. Let's close this up. Welcome to the rainforest today. <laughs> Peanut butter cookies and snickerdoodles have got to be your favorites. Mmm, snickerdoodles are underrated, I would say. They're really good. The first time I made them, I wasn't expecting much, but they're super tasty. I think for me, peanut butter cookies, and I really like dark chocolate chip cookies with sea salt. Although like white chocolate macadamia cookies are really good too. I'm not too picky about cookies. If there's cookies, I'm in. Okay, turkey breast. So we'll do our slices this way. It's a bit frosty if you're like, why is Kate struggling to slice that? <laughs> like a pretty good amount of turkey already. Might end up with some leftover filling and that's okay as well. Then you just have to make the crust and fill them. Oh man, now that those cookies are in here with us, it's a very distracting smell <laughs> as they cool down. Oh man, chat. <laughs> <laughs> BB Bubs, how are you doing, man? Great to have you in here, a fellow food and drink streamer. We can get a quick shout out for him too. Looks like good turkey, Red Panda, and you're not usually a fan. It is, yeah. Smoked turkey, I don't know what it is, but it turns out like so moist and delicious. It's like it's just meant to be smoked. Was it smoked on the big green egg? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. We smoked it with some pecan chips. Okay, I wonder how was that looking? Well, you know what? We'll dice up the other breast and if we have leftover filling, that's okay. Yeah, cookies for the win as well. This whole meal, BB Bubs. It's like a meal that you can get at your grandma's house. Have your pot pot have your salad and then if you eat everything eat all your veggies you get a cookie <laughs> okay next one the holding turkey breast yeah most most people overcook the turkey sad to say What plants crave? Welcome in. I think you're new here. <laughs> Have we crossed paths before? It usually is a thing that happens here on Food and Drink on Twitch. You're a lurker. Well, thank you very much for the lurks. Okay, we'll pick all the skin off. Found a sneaky little vein there. That's good. I 
And yeah, it's much better to freeze whole pieces of meat like this and then dice them up than to pre-dice and freeze it, I find. It just stays juicier this way. Okay, so we know that when we butcher the turkey breast off of the wing, there's always this connective bit here, just like what we cut off of the last piece. Just come in and discard that to start. We don't want that in the mixture. We'll do a bit more up this way. And yeah, I'm just doing it messy with my paring knife. Please don't judge me. Although if you do, that's okay too. Okay, ready to take the tender? Like, look at that. Boom, turkey tender, done. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna start slicing from this angle. Yeah, no pre-dice. That's just my opinion, though. Sous vide turkey breast? Yeah, I could see that being really good, BB Bubs. I've never tried it, though. I've never worked anywhere that did it, and I've never done it for us before. Still a bit frosty, this piece as well, but that's okay. And then this, I think I'll just do a couple slices through that way. It actually does red panda. Yeah, that's why we chose the pecan wood, is it gives it kind of a nutty flavor. And the pecan just uh, complements the turkey really nice. And then the other thing that the pecan wood is good for is adding the color onto the turkey like you see here. So it has that little like pink or red hue on the outside. Pecan wood is really great for that. Okay, we'll just stack those two by two and dice them. Ooh, nice BB buds. Yeah, we'll have to try it. Sous vide breast and then you con feed the turkey legs. Beautiful, man. I love confit. Lauren, the local culinary school had a market yesterday. You missed out on the locally raised smoked heritage pork shoulder. They ran out so fast. Oh, wow. That sounds really cool though. Culinary school is doing smoked stuff. Like we didn't have anything in our curriculum regarding cooking with fire or smoking or yeah, anything like that. Maybe that would have been in the butcher course though. Probably makes sense. Maybe uh, it's up to us to create that course, hey? Maybe. Okay, there we go. We did it. Now we'll just marry this on up with some of that turkey stock that we have in the pot. I'm just gonna do a quick cleanup. Vion, you shouldn't have had the third taco. It's like you know better. Although, thank you for pushing yourself to that point. <laughs> Vion can no longer even roll around. They have a beautiful outdoor smoker. When you walk your dog later, you'll take a picture. Yeah, I would love that. I would love to see it. Okay, rinse both of our knives. We got them tarked up. Oh, 
We'll wipe those off. Oh, daddy. Yeah. This time you were smart and grabbed food before the stream. What did you miss so far? We just finished baking off the peanut butter cookies. We just finished getting together the pot pie filling where we haven't even mixed it up fully yet. So you're not too late for that. And yeah, we still have to roll out the pastry and put it in the tins. We gotta still taste the filling mixture and make sure we're really happy with it. And then we can fill them up, bake a pie, and then we just have to do our little side salad of greens and we're gonna do another batch of the Maddie Matheson green olive vinaigrette from his cookbook. We got the proper olives this time, so I had to do it again. Plus, our friends have not tried it yet and I think they would love it. Yeah, offset grills and smokers cooking grill, it's an investment, that's the thing. Is we know from experience, anything good is not cheap. Anything cheap is not necessarily good. And especially with cooking things is kind of the more you spend, the longer it's gonna last you in the end. So yeah, definitely we've always looked at the eggs and any barbecue equipment as an investment. And you kind of want it to outlast you, let's say. Hello, Dongs. Yeah, you gotta roll, roll, roll your dough. Hope you're doing good, Dongs. The slave, AKA yourself, Tef, has now cleaned the kitchen and the Friday weekend can now come. Yeah, buddy. You did it, you made it. And yeah, welcome back. Okay, Panda, every time you reset your island on AC, you get Hazel as a starter villager. <laughs> I've never done the reset. Don't really know how that works. Sounds scary though. Mid-range one is called a Yoder. Yeah. Yes, Sammy says. 1K was your range. You destroy barbecue if it's cheap. Yeah, you need to invest. And then the other thing, it's like I have really been enjoying just cooking with charcoal and wood compared to buying like a gas or a propane style grill is I feel like cooking with fire is more versatile that way. And you also learn something new. <laughs> yeah, Dongs. Got like a one in 10 chance of being insta banned first time I say hi in any channel. It's true, but at least you know. Rectech smokers are nice and cheaper than Yoder. Okay, thanks Supra for those little pro tips. Oh, okay, cooking girl, you only barbecue with wood and charcoal. Well, then you know what you're doing. You already got a head start. Okay, let's pop on in. We gotta mix this up. Yes, Scat, I am in. You named your island Sugar Shine? I've never seen Hazel the Squirrel. Sterling the Burb? What? Okay, what are we working with here? What kind of ratios we got? And the only thing we've really seasoned so far in the mixture was the mushrooms a touch when we were cooking the cremini's out. But the turkey has been seasoned when it was first smoked. I'm also trying not to just put this everywhere. As well as the wild mushrooms were seasoned a touch when they were pasteurized originally. So that's why we haven't really added any more salt yet. And maybe we won't actually have to. But yeah, this mixture looks beautiful, guys. I don't think I would want anything different than that. You can see all the meat, you know what all the mushrooms are in there, and even like the peas and carrots look super, super good. So I did cremini mushroom, as well as pine mushroom, chanterelle, and lobster. Looks like a party dish. Thanks, Whip Silk. Yeah, you can't rely on electricity to be available all the time to justify a pellet setup. Very fair, Supra. We're actually looking into like being able to run the, the pellet smoker, the Traeger off of like a, a solar 
solar generator could be cool and hi shadow hope you're doing good okay let's bring this is our broth over we mixed in some of the mushrooms as well or the mushroom jus let's say so i'm just gonna ladle in a bit of that at a time until it seems nice and moistened And then sometimes they even add in a little bit of flour into this entire mixture as you just kind of sprinkle and mix it in. And that way our filling is never runny. And so when you bake the pie, the flour thickens up the jus or the stock. And then when it's done, it's perfect. Cooking Girl, we've really been enjoying using the Traeger as like a supplement for a convection oven because the style that we got is able to go up to 500 Fahrenheit. So yeah, we cooked or we baked the cookies in there earlier and we're also going to be using the Traeger to bake the pot pies in as well. Okay, there's no extra moisture down in the bottom so we know we can keep adding the broth. Just a little time stem in there to get rid of. Okay, sounds good, Scat. Gotta go deal with drunk college kids. What is going on over there? looking better juicier and I'll definitely taste this before I add the flour because then all I'll be able to taste really is that uncooked starch that won't give me a good idea of the mixture that we made okay yum let's grab a spoon see how we did That is moist, you could hear it. <laughs> the mixing sounds, the ratios. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit kind of of everything on this one bite. Mm. Mm -hmm. The smoke flavor from the turkey is not overpowering either. Okay, just a little bit of salt and pepper. I'll add a sprinkle of flour for good measure. And we'll just pop that into the fridge. We can start rolling out our dough when they're tempt, which I think that the doughs will take about 10, 15 minutes just out at room temperature on the counter. So while those are temping up, we can do our salad stuff and everything's just going to time out perfectly. Very generous with the turkey too. Thanks, Cookie. Yeah, that's the thing is like when I make a menu, I'm not skimping on anything. I just don't see the point of it. It's like make people amazing food that they'll appreciate. Google yeeted the dislike button on YouTube videos? What? Is this actually true? And good morning, iStrip. How are you feeling today, my dude? Are you on the mend? Sammy showed me some of your foods that you were finally able to eat. Showed me your stories that you posted. 
It is true. Well, that's crazy. What, the big companies couldn't handle getting dislikes? What's the matter with that? All the small people have to deal with them. <laughs> okay, very small amount of flour, like that. Just a sprink. You still see it? Oh, okay, maybe they are rolling it. I don't know then. I can't currently check those facts. Mix in that flour and the seasoning nice and even. I think we did really good ratios of all this stuff in the filling too. Nothing's really overpowering the other thing. It's just a perfect mixture. You could also add some corn into there too if you wanted, but I didn't find it necessary for this. Yeah, that's really come together now. I think we might even need a bit more stock and that's a-okay. Heck it, I'm just gonna go for the pour. Feel like you're on the mend, that's good. Should fingers crossed be home today where you can actually properly rest? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, so YouTube is testing the removal. Public dislike counts, but will not be getting rid of it altogether. Testing the new design in response to feedback that dislike counts can affect the well-being of content creators. Well, I guess. But like to me, I guess dislikes, yeah, because you can't really say what you dislike about the video unless someone comments. But it's like kind of a way to let the creator know if their audience is enjoying their content, right? That's how I see that button. But like I said, if no one leaves a comment for the constructive criticism, then yeah, maybe it's just hurtful to the creator. In my opinion, friends, haters gonna hate and taters are gonna tate. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about that. Okay, this is a happy, happy mixture now. Coco Vision. No, I've gotten some dislikes, Lauren, but it's like, okay, that's fine. Not everyone can love your stuff. Okay, let's pop this away while I'm over there. I'll grab out the pie crusts. They're so cute too. Cutest little pie crust ever. Sammy helped me make the dough after stream yesterday. Sammy was helping. Just fit that in. Oh, doggo. She's like, guys, I'm getting so wet. Come on. Come on. Put your wet footprints all over. Oh, man. Okay, and then real quick, since we're done with the stock, we'll pack this up. I'm going to strain out the mushies from the pot. Keep it nice and clear. And that can go back into the fridge. There was just a couple that fell through. RIP. Yeah, I strip. That's usually the case, is painkillers are there for a reason. Especially when you get home, right? Because you have no one to rely on. 
don't got the nurses there anymore. You have to be your own nurse. Oh, it is raining heavily where we are at right now, Panda. Could you hear it? It's the type of rain we say it's socked in. It's like it's kind of just missed in forever. Feels like you just walk outside into a waterfall. <laughs> Very saturating the type of rain right now. Yeah, she's coming in all wet. Cause she went outside to come down. Okay, so we made 14 of these little pie doughs. So I made them smaller so that they're able to fit into this little guy. So I'm thinking one of these will definitely roll out to fit that, but they need to temp up a bit. So we can't just roll this out right from the fridge. It's super cold and rock hard. So I'll lay them all out on the counter, let it start warming up. And then when they are pliable, we can start rolling them out. So kind of prepare all of the pans that we're gonna fill. Well, it actually is a rainforest. That's the thing, Lauren. This Vancouver Island is known as a rainforest in Canada. <laughs> What's up, doggo? Okay, she's looking at me like she needs some pets in her life. Hello, Emily, not Amy. Are you excited too? <laughs> Thank you friends for the raid. Welcome in. How was your stream? What did you get up to? Yes, thank you for the shout out as well, Cookie. Please, if you've never hopped over and watched a stream, give them a follow so you can check it out when they're live or go watch a VOD. Hello, Carly Sue. <laughs> it's definitely not Amy. <laughs> oh, welcome. What did you guys get up to? sure Sammy is well aware of this, but where you grew up, up or where you live, a lot of the communities were founded on logging. Porterhawk, thank you for that follow. Hi, hi. Yeah, we are. I just took out all of the little pastry crusts from the fridge and they're starting to temp up so they can get rolled out for our individual pot pies. So we were just talking about kind of prepping the little pie tins for ourselves. And then while those are sitting and getting ready for us, we're going to make up some salad dressing together. It's a Maddie Matheson recipe. What is this little package that they put together here? Stump the chef. Yeah, the little pie doughs that I did. Looks like they would fit in ramekins. Well, what I did, so it should have made eight full size pie crusts. And then I cut it down since I knew we were making smaller pies. I cut it down to make seven small ones with top and bottom. This is the last night of jam week. Ooh, I love making jam. Made some German jelly donuts. Yum. And shortbread jam squares. I'm into all of those things. And hopefully it all turned out really good too. Yeah, thanks for popping by and sharing your community with us. Okay, there we go. I love the little lid that those come with too. Okay, we're all prepped up. Maybe now could be a good time to try a cookie. This ugly one over here. Oh, they definitely look good. So we made very simple peanut butter cookies. I'm gonna take this one that kind of spread out a bit. Let's see how we did. They're supposed to be crunchy and chewy, which I think they will be. Hello, Slimgo. How are you doing? Like those ones will definitely be more chewy. It's a good one, Sammy. Mmm. The outside crisp. 
Yummy. And yeah, good little crumb. Really good. I really wasn't sure how long these were gonna take to bake, but it took close to half an hour. That's crazy. Yeah, Cookie Monster noises. It turned out so good, Emily. You had low expectations for the donuts. You were shocked how good they were. I love when that happens. Like, pleasantly surprised, I always say. Oh, bless you. Bless the dog. We're bindings. Hey, Kate, how is it that you like cooking so much? I honestly don't know. I think I like the eating part. <laughs> So then I just keep making food, you know, I also like to share Like watching or hearing about what other people think of the food. I make them is really My favorite part I think She says we're chilling guys Who likes black licorice not me not me. Yeah, aka who's Dutch? Did the Dutch just love it, Orca? <laughs> Sam. I really like the chew in this cookie recipe. When it just kind of sticks in the back of your cheek. Hello, Ernest. How are you doing today, friends? It's my culinary school popping in. They're checking up on me. <laughs> We're having a snack break. You only have like 500 different versions of black licorice in the Netherlands, crazy. I think I remember that though, when I was there. I was like, I should definitely try this, but I just don't like it. Yeah, pot pie. We just took out our crusts to roll out. They're just temping up first though. Can't really roll out a rock hard pie crust. Okay, last bite, then I'll wash up and then we'll quickly whip up our dressing together. Green olive vinaigrette. But you like alcohol? Yeah, I, I don't mind alcohol. Yeah, Zambuca, I was gonna say, I can't, I can't picture myself enjoying the Zambuca in espresso. Oh no, Orca. I'm scared. <laughs> I am scared. Okay, just finding the Maddie recipe here. It's from the Rachel Ray show is where I got the recipe from. Here, I'll copy paste it real quick since I just realized I didn't have it linked there with the rest of them. There you go. So they say this super simple, tasty dressing, easy to make in a blender, and it's the perfect finish for good green leaf lettuce. And it's from Maddie's mother-in-law, Carol. So the very first time I went to my future wife's house for dinner, her mom served this salad and it was perfect. I'm a guy who hates salads, so that says something. And yeah, we've made this once before on stream and it is so dang good. So yeah, Maddie Matheson went on the Rachel Ray show and they made this together. Let's get out the ingredients. So obviously we need olives and we need a blender. We also gotta pit the olives, so that, that might take a bit of time first. We'll monitor our pie crust. 
as they temp up here. If I have to put them back in the fridge, that's a-okay too. We're all about the no stress. But we can put the rest of the ingredients in here. The Zambuca curse. <laughs> I actually, I don't mind it, but if I had the choice, I wouldn't choose that one. I don't know if that would work the same panda. That's the thing. And it's not the type of green olive like you're thinking. So it's a higher end olive. I use these ones, Castro Villano. And we do have to pit them, but these are very buttery tasting compared to like green olives typically in a jar with the pimento in them are very briny and they just kind of taste like vinegar. Yeah, these are so dang good. Like this is not even gonna compare to the first time we made this olive dressing. Skookum, I'm always disappointed with mushy store-bought pies or pot pies, yeah. I agree with that one. Mmm, peanut butter cookie washed down with the rest of the coffee. Very nice. And good day to you, Kanara. Happy Friday. You're very welcome. You got the, you got, I got a grin on your face after we came in. Hey, I'm happy to give you that for sure. So once again, these are the olives that we pick up. We got these from Costco here. Note that they are organic, so we love to see that. Castro Villano. Or there's another variety similar called Cherignola. Oh, there's pits in them. Yeah, they're whole. They come whole, so we'll have to pit them. Carly Sue, thank you for the follow. Okay, so I need garlic. I gotta snip some chives from outside because I don't have green onion. We'll grab a lemon. We need olive oil. Some white vinegar. As well as grapeseed oil. So two different types of oils. You're guilty of buying the little cheap snacking olive packs. Hey, those are good too, Lauren. Italian or Greek? Hey, I like both. I like both. Okay, Pepper wants to go out, so I might as well go grab the chives if I'm going that way. I'll be right back, hold tight. Yeah, you gotta go back up. Okay, let's go. Go quick. Go quick. ordered this. <laughs> like, I come in from outside, I'm literally dripping. I'm just gonna give the chives a little rinse. Just give them a little rinsey. I took both types of chives, both the regular and the garlic ones. You want the rain, Orca? Yeah, I don't mind it. I guess it's good for the earth. Whoa. Whoa, make your own olives? Crazy. Let me know how it goes if you end up doing that. Okay, so we're just gonna chop those down roughly. That's gonna go into the blender. Oh, the other thing that I should have grabbed while I was out there is parsley. I really liked adding some parsley to this mix too. I gotta go back out. Wish me luck. I wish you luck. Thanks. Doesn't stop construction though, hey? Run! Okay. 
<laughs> At least the parsley is very nicely washed for us. Yeah, also doesn't stop the mail carriers. Just gonna try and dry that off a touch. We'll pick that off of the stem. Fresh herbs and a spritz, exactly. All the stuff in the garden's happy with the rain, that's for sure. <laughs> Koalas, catnip, not quite. Not quite. Just some chives and parsley to start. Do you live where you have door-to-door -door mail delivery? It depends on what it is. It depends on what it is. Okay, I don't think we have any more shallot for this. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of red onion, a little corner of it. Has to get used up anyways. Let's see what we're working with here. Mm, and I need to grab the lemon and white vinegar. We need a little bit of garlic. Because it's gonna be raw garlic, not too much of this. Two cloves like that should be good. We'll just give them a smash so we can peel them. The blender will do the rest of the work. Oh my gosh, Bonk. Yeah, they're still listening. I think they'll be listening forever. Hello, BC. How have you been? Welcome, welcome. Great to have you. Okay, so I'm just gonna literally cut a small amount from the red onion like that. And then the rest is gonna go back into the fridge. I just don't see the point of cutting it all in half and stuff. We're only using this very small amount. Got that. Our vin and lemon. Oh, I didn't see what you're doing for dinner, Panda. Sorry. Chat's kind of crazy for me today. I've been having a tough time being able to keep up with all your guys' chats. And that's a good thing. That's never a bad thing. I love when you guys just talk amongst yourselves. You wanted to try also buco for the first time tonight. It's almost $30. Yeah, that's the thing, is like those longer braised dishes are always so expensive because of the time it takes to make them in the restaurant is you have to pay the cook that whole time, right? So those types of things are better off doing yourself. Okay, we're zesting and juicing this, so let's give it a rinse. You're eating one of the frozen meals they dropped off? Ooh, hash brown casserole. I've had that before. Definitely reminds me of some family get-togethers. Okay, our lemon. Let's zest it up with our microplane zester. Oh, the zest went in my eye a bit. The essential oils, they're not messing around. I'm alive. This salad's gonna balance out so nice with the nice rich pot pie.
There you go. Give that a tap. Oh yeah, still going in my eye. <laughs> it burns. Are you gonna eat the lemon when you're done with it? I was not planning on it. Also, not the like juiciest lemon. They do say that the thicker the skin on the lemon, kind of the less juice it has. Let's see. Let's see what we're working with. You just want to see my sour face? Is that what you're saying? Okay, that was pretty dang juicy though. No seeds allowed. Okay, I think I got to cut cut the top of this off otherwise it's not going to fit. Yum. So that's part of our acidic component of the dressing. And then the other part is the white vinegar, which white vinegar has the highest acidity but is the least expensive to buy. So that's something to think about. He just says a couple tablespoons. We'll start with that. I have a bit more in there, but I will have to put that one on the list. Yeah, this juicer, it is a beast. Like. I don't know, whatever type of metal they used for the the hinge on it, very good. Yes, Cookie, yeah, natural cleaning. Like when we wash the floor, we do a mixture of white vinegar and lemon juice and baking soda. And it works so good and it smells so fresh after too. Okay, so he does half a cup of canola oil and half a cup of olive oil. I think I'll start more with like a one cup and one cup ratio as it seems like I'm doubling everything he did because we have four salads going out the door today. Just got in some of those juicers. They are very good. Yeah, I've had that one for years and it's old faithful now. Goat curry, bottle of ginger beer. Oh, a bubble from the ginger beer in your eye, it stung a bit? Yes, I could see that. Okay, so equal parts of the oil. Just kind of watch as I pour here. Oh man, Bonk, it's already that time. That also lets me know that it's 2 p.m. my time. But we're finishing up pretty quickly here. And I hope you have a wonderful day at work, Bonk. Thanks for hanging out for the first part of the day. Stay safe out there. Bye, Bonk. Okay, let's see how that goes. We'll keep these here just in case. Enjoy the yummies. Yes, we will. Yes, it is extra virgin olive oil. So this is the brand we always buy. They come in two packs at Costco, quite inexpensive. So it's Tunisian extra virgin olive oil, first cold press too. And then if we look at it, so organic, it's non-GMO, Passover certified, gluten-free. It's cold pressed within four hours of the olives being harvested. Yeah, you can't really beat this one for the price. <laughs> we also have been notified that they package this oil. Is it 50 gallon drums, Sam? What? The drums of the oil, is it 50 gallons? Mm, it'd be the same as our, all of our oil outside, so I think it's... Oh, it's a smaller... 25 liter, 25 liters. 25 liter drum of this at the business Costco. I cannot wait. Just like pump the oil out. <laughs> so yeah, I did a mixture. This was the grape seed that we use. So grape seed and olive oil. Okay, there is that. So that's the base of the dressing. Just paying attention to my pie crusts here. I'm gonna give them all a little flip over. Keep them temping up nice and even. And then where is my cherry pitter? So a lot of people don't know this or have even ever used something like this, but this is a cherry pitter. 
and they work really good for pitting olives. Open them up. Whew, that is a full jar. Um, just use a spoon, I think, to take the olives out. Don't want to contaminate. So yeah, this variety of olive is very buttery, not briny at all. I would say it's the most mild tasting olive that I've ever encountered. One thing that we've never done on stream before is smoked olives, and they are absolutely amazing. I kind of got sick of them because a lot of restaurants have been doing those for appetizers. But we should do them together in the summertime. It's so, so good. Okay, I think that'll be enough. I think that'll be enough to start. Yeah, it tried to escape its fate, and then I need one for me too. Just to be sure that they're good, you know? Mm. Like it's fruity. It's buttery, sweet. Just a little bit of bitterness, which is actually nice. But yeah, it's mostly just like fruity. Chef snacks indeed. That's the other thing right now, cooking grill, is barbecues are in very high demand. Well, it is coming up to grill in season, so there's that. But yeah, like we couldn't even buy another of the same type of Traeger if we wanted. Okay, so we might as well pit all of these at once. So we put our olive in like that, and then we press the pit through the bottom. It should work, just like that. And then I always save these because there's a little bit of olive on the bottom. Just munch all of that off after. And we get a perfectly pitted olive. Boom. Sometimes it just doesn't work though and that's okay. <laughs> and I always make a really funny face when I'm doing it. I think it's because of the juices kind of splash. Oh my gosh. And careful, the pit might go flying. Like really flying. And don't get your hand caught in there either. That would really hurt. Oh, so whether it's used for cherries or olives, multi-purpose tool, always handy to have. Also, is it super loud when it smashes? It's not bad. Okay. And yeah, once they're pitted, we can just toss them all into the blender hole. And then by that time, you should be able to start rolling out the pastry. Yeah, grilling and gardening season. It's around the corner for a lot of people, I would say. Yeah, good thing dog goes outside when it goes fine, exactly. It's like she knew, she knew what was coming up. Just put a little bowl under, oh, that's a good idea. Except I find that they just kind of go everywhere, Orca. Can't really control the pit. That one's not gonna come out, so maybe we'll try the other side one more time. No, that just means it's too big to get pushed through. That olive says, never, you will never pit me. A rasp? Yeah, like the microplane you're saying could be multi-purpose for sure, for sure. You can use it for zesting, you can use it for 
grating cheese over stuff for a garnish. Some people use it for mincing garlic. As you grate your garlic on it. Put a dish towel under to absorb the juice. That could work too. Honestly, I just like to power through this. But thank you for the pro tips, friends. Like those are all really good suggestions. Just for me to turn around, grab a towel, and move all of this stuff to get it to look really nice as we do it, I'm gonna be done pitting the olives. You know what I mean? So like, there are certain things I think that a chef's just like, no, nah, we're not going to. <laughs> But it's nice that you guys say those suggestions in chat because then it'll give everyone else different ideas if they do this for themselves at home. That one's too big as well. I just felt it. You feels it. You're being a good friend this weekend, helping put Lexan glass projectors on his house. He lost three windows due to golf balls in the last month. Yo, how is that a thing? Obviously he lives by a golf course, I'm gonna assume. Does the golf course not like pay for that? Nope. Seriously? Yeah, Cody's dad just live on, a, <clears throat> on the golf course. Thanks, Sammy. Welcome. Five second reel. Okay. Pitted olives in. Sammy snacks in the container. Yeah, with everything going in, it is very nice dressing recipe, Kanara. How many cookie orders do you have to sell? One. Oh. Paul. Paul. Probably his kid. I will leave that spoon there for myself so we can taste the dressing. Let's wipe up this brine. Doesn't keep soaking in. <laughs> you got nut hatches at the house? <laughs> so, okay. Hold on two seconds, guys. I just have to take a really quick bathroom break, but we're almost there. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I am back and ready to go. Yeah, Lauren, you can add me to the list of cookie orders. <laughs> okay, one more check just to make sure we got everything we need. Olives, garlic, chives, lemon zest and juice, olive oil and grapeseed oil, shallot, parsley, white vinegar, and just a bit of salt and pepper, he says but I usually season after it's been blended together. Then we can really determine how much salt we need. Oh yes. Yeah, some houses like that, depending on where they're located, people will just keep driving into the house. So crazy. 
Okay, let's quickly go over. And the thing with this dressing, so we're not blending it until it's smooth. It should be nice and chunky. So just keep that in mind. So just go on low speed to start. And then just watch as it blends up. I think we're gonna need a bit more acid, vinegar. Turn it up just a touch to get that onion blitzed in as well as the garlic. Let's see how how we did there. I need to move near you. <laughs> we'll come visit one day for sure. So this is how it's looking so far. So if I swirl it, you can see the olive chunks in there, just kind of hiding in the in the oil. So let's see. Just a little dip and a taste. For sure a little bit more of the vinegar. Yeah, it is very good, Lauren. I'm just gonna do the rest of that. That was a tablespoon. And that's all gone. And then we'll season. And I will say, if you make this dressing earlier, it will be better if it sits at least an hour, I would say. And that way you'll get all the flavors imparted into it. Right now it's a little bit bland tasting. but if it sits, then you'll get more of the garlic, onion, and herb flavors. Okay, let's see how that was. Just a pinch of salt and some pep. Yeah, that kind of looks like a smoothie. One more quick blitz. Let's see. Looks yum. Okay, I'm gonna have a bigger bite this time. I think we still need a bit more salt. But the acid in the oil is nicely balanced. So just a touch of salt to kind of cut through the oil. And that'll also bring more of the other flavors to the front of your palate. <laughs> yeah, it would be great for your skin, hair, and nails. <laughs> All of the oil. <laughs> We'll do one more mix, see how that is. Should be good though. Three Tim Hortons and three Subways. That's a bit much. I mean, we got two Tim Hortons in our small town in a Subway. So I guess we're not that much better. Okay, so if I do a, a scoop, that's how it looks. And yeah, there's not even any Dijon mustard to help emulsify this, no nothing. Mm. Really get that buttery olive flavor now. So you know you added enough salt when it's like, wow, that's delicious. If you don't have that reaction, then you're just not there yet. And usually I find it takes about two or three times tasting something to really get an idea of how it should be tasting. Okay, we'll just pour that into a container for later. Or actually, while we're here, I'll just distribute the four that we need. Get them packed up in the fridge. Okay. 
So then the rest will pack up for ourselves. Just give it a little mix. It is starting to go more and more green as well as it sits here. That's more than enough for their one salad. Very excited to hear what everyone thinks of this dressing today too. I really think that they're gonna love it. They've never not liked any of my dressings yet. Where did I put that bottle? You think I can pour into that, guys? You think it's safe to pour? I don't know. Maybe if we go on an angle? No. Okay, I'll grab a late or uh, a funnel. Yeah, seriously, you gotta try this. And even if you have people in the house that say they're olive haters, don't tell them that there's olives in it. That's all. They would not know any better. Okay, I'll hold that onto there and we'll be able to pour. <laughs> Perfect. up the rest because why not it's a very healthy dressing I would say as well oil vinegar herbs garlic olive gonna give that a rinse Awesome. we didn't have to add any more of the oil so I'll pop those away that was another of the hard parts of the stream complete yeah we have our friends that come over on Fridays and Saturdays so yeah check that out this is how that looks when it's done not the most like appealing looking but it is so so good very happy that I tried that recipe. Yeah, it just needs a label, exactly. It's not always the same group of people that come pick up. It's often similar ones, but not everyone orders every single week. Okay, let's pop all of this into the fridge and then it's time. All of our pastries are temped up. I might put a few just back in the fridge so they don't warm up too much. Yeah, Sam will eat mustard if I sneak it in a dressing. It's true, Nike. Well, I would know if it was yellow, though. I often put Dijon, though, into, like, a lot of the ones. Oh, yeah, yellow mustard? I don't. I don't even keep that in the house. I've been converted. Okay, Olive's got to go in the fridge, too. So yummy. All right, shall we pack up some cookies for our friend Paul? And I can condense those pans. Um, what do I feel like giving him here? I'll just put his cookies in a little baggie. Yeah, pie making time. It's my favorite, Lauren. Yeah, those baked up so perfect on the Traeger. Oh man. Just organizing my area a bit there. 
Okay, that's better. Feels better, friends. All right, so we got all of our pie tins ready to go here. Just put them beside ourselves. Then we'll grab our rolling pin. It's like already flowered up for us. And then, I don't really wanna get this board all flowered because I did just seal it up yesterday. So I don't wanna wash all of that off again. So I'm gonna use the plastic cutting board as a barrier. We'll roll out on that. Scrapple is like such a funny word, but it is delicious. There, that's a good view. Yeah, I remember my first Scrapple and I was like, what are you talking about, chef? It's made from a pig's head. Basically like head cheese, I would say. Okay, so the only thing we got left is to fill our pies and bake them and just get together our greens for the salad. That's it. So there's this. We do want to use the bigger crusts for the bottom. Just kind of organizing them by looks. And then the smaller ones for the top of the pies. That looks good. How's this one compare? Definitely a bottom. Okay, flour bin. I'm gonna keep on this side of myself so it's easy to pull from. Yeah, scrapple. It's good. Remember, we always gotta try something once and then we know, rather than saying that we don't like it but we don't actually know. We don't need a ton of flour to roll out the pastry. Usually I put a little bit like that and then just spread it out. Let's unwrap. So this is the flaky pie crust recipe from Sally's Baking Addiction. It is linked in chat there for you guys. If you do exclamation mark recipe, it'll pop up. Give it a little flour on top. The people who don't even look at the food just pour over an entire ketchup bottle. I don't think I know people like that safely, Orca. So away we go. I think we'll roll all the bottoms out first. Kind of sew that back up together if we can. Yeah, we'll get all of the bases filled and then we'll top them all at the same time and then get it baking in the oven. And I will say the individual pot pie should definitely bake quicker than a large size one. Not take too, too long. Let's say maybe 20, 20, 25 minutes. Whereas the larger pie is probably closer 3540. Just gonna flip this. Give it a little sprinkle in the flour. But so far so good guys. See how our edges aren't cracking too too much. And then the middle of the dough, if I zoom in, you can see like those are all the lard and butter streaks inside of the pastry. And that's how you know you're gonna have a very flaky crust. And I usually roll out my pastry to a quarter inch thickness. So we can go pretty thin and it'll still keep its structure. Okay, let's see how that is. Stay. Oh, you're just gonna keep rolling? Okay. <laughs> Put you on the other side then. Oh, I was like, is that a hair? No, it was just a little piece of like the plastic that they were packaged with. It's like, that felt really weird. Wait, hippie, you make your own Scrapple. See, I knew it was a thing. Someone in chat had to have made Scrapple before. Yeah, it is awesome. Okay, so now we guide our crust into this. 
getting it all into the bottom. I can definitely see that my crusts are gonna be way more than we need to fill this and that's okay. Would much rather have extra than not enough. We'll also keep that in mind for future purpose for myself. If I make the pot pies again, I'll even divide the pastry smaller for individual ones. But yeah, that's all filled in now. And now the only thing we're gonna do is trim off the excess dough. And then we're not just gonna crumple the dough up right away. So find with your paring knife where the edge of the pan is. There we go guys, cutest little pie ever. And then all we're gonna do with this, is kind of almost like sew it back together. So that's why I said don't crumple it, because then you're gonna overwork the gluten. So like we can potentially reuse that. I'm gonna grab a pastry knife. I'm just gonna store all of our excess just up here. I don't want it to get too dry or floury though. Next. Are we gonna do lattice? Ooh, yeah, I usually don't do lattice for the pot pies. Just a little vent hole in the middle is all we need. Would be really nice for a fruit pie though. Next. Really excited to see how many pies we're able to make from all of this. Okay, it's a bit sticky, so I'm just gonna flip that. And I will say, if you try and keep your pie dough too thick, it will be hard to try and get it into the shell, into the pan. So yeah, you can't leave the dough too thick, even though you think you, can have all the pastry. Just doesn't work as good. Next. Yeah, you love pot pies, but you think it's because you like the crust? Probably, Scoots. It's so good when it's like made fresh, not just bought from the store frozen. There we go. We're all pressed in. Press onto the edge too, because that helps when we trim it. Just keeping it in place. Just gonna cut it into quarters. I think that'll stack up really nice. And yeah, because it's not like crazy floured, we should be able to get it to stick back together. <laughs> Keep stacking that up there. Our little discard area. Hey, West Coast Grow, how are you? You're from Nanaimo. Yeah, you've not been back in a bit. I remember. Recently picked up an electric smoker, been experimenting with it. Trying a bacon wrapped meatloaf tonight. 50 50 beef lamb. Yum. 
Well, I don't know if you use Discord ever, but I would love to see how the meatloaf turned out. You can post a photo in the food photo section there. <laughs> don't want to scare the rooster. Yum, look at the fat streaks in there. That's how you know it's gonna be delicious. Need a bit more flour. I don't know what happened to this crust, but it ended up being a square. <laughs> Sometimes things happen. Oh, get back onto there. Yeah, you're gonna share it? Awesome. I cannot wait to see that later. guys so this should be the really difficult part of stream right now is rolling out the crust and prepping the pies but i'm pretty sure i'm making it look really easy Save the pastry. <laughs> Thanks, Vian. Yeah, you do make it look easy, Kate. He was just thinking it. Okay, we got three down. Maybe after this one, we'll try and work work these scraps into a nice little bottom pastry. Definitely don't wanna uh, use that for a top. We want the tops to be all really nice, but we can definitely reuse it for a bottom. <laughs> Vyun, you're still regretting the taco? Oh, you really wrecked yourself. You should have checked yourself first. Oh, Vyun. So see how I kind of keep picking it up after a few rolls just to make sure it's not sticking? That's a good tip. That's a good thing to remember. Can flip it over again. I'm doing stuff in the background that I already know. Pies, no, nah, 400 will be a bit high. Let's say like 375. When do you want me to start it? Not, yeah. no. Okay. I think we do. 
Yeah, no, that's my favorite part as well, Vyun. Like the, so we clean all of the fat off of the outside of the eye of round when we make the jerky, which you guys can go watch the video. That's our latest upload on YouTube. How to make your own beef jerky at home if you have a pellet smoker. But yeah, we clean off all the fat on the outside, but whatever little bit of fat is like on the inside of the piece of meat when we slice, we keep that in. It's so good. And Vune only got like our first round of jerky. That wasn't even the good stuff that we make now. Oh man. So like he thinks he knows Lauren, but he doesn't actually know. So it's okay. Don't feel like you're missing out. Okay, I'm gonna use just my pastry scraper or bench scraper. Yeah, it wasn't even the good stuff. <laughs> Not compared to what we make now. Yeah. I'm gonna do a bit more flour just cause this stuff has gotten a bit warm sitting here for a few moments. Just gonna pick it all up like that. Place it there. Oh, look at the butter on top. Just gonna flour that little bit where it's fatty. And now let's see how this rolls out. Should be able to get a few bases. Do the initial rolls just to get it to hopefully stick together. We do a bit of both, Lauren. So yeah, we ship jerky just to the province over for some family and friends. And then we do have our friends here that like to take it when we have it. So yeah, between both of those outlets, sometimes it's hard to keep up with everyone's orders. Gonna try to make homemade sugar cookies this weekend. Nice jam. Those are a very simple cookie. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's see if this is sticking anywhere underneath. No, isn't this turning out real nice? You can see a touch there where the layers are apart, but we're A-OK, -okay, guys. Maybe we can get two bottoms from this. It's so fatty up there. So flaky. I think we'll definitely be able to. Just feeling the thickness of it. We're almost there. And then if I do that, or maybe I'll do one pan there, basically cut it on an angle. I wish there was enough that we could do like four from it, but I don't think that'll be possible. Just gonna leave that little pan there. Let's see how that works. So pick that up. Oh, that one might be for us then. Oh, Sammy. Oh, yeah. Torture. Here's one piece for you, for the Thanks. Eat right now. I'm definitely not. I got pie hands. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim a bit of this off. And you know the deal. We can do our little patch up around the edge. Ow! It's the karma. <laughs> That was karma. Are you okay? Yeah, <laughs> He's so 
stubbed his toe. I did. It's okay. Okay, last piece to sew, and then we'll trim it up. The jerky will ease the pain. And then we'll do the same thing with this other one. And look, we maximize more, more crusts. The jerky is okay. Yeah, the jerky's okay, guys. It's okay. <laughs> okay, we got five done. And look, barely any scraps now. But I'm still not going to toss those. So next one... Maybe this one will fit better. We'll see. But I feel like it'll fit about the same. A BuzzFeed article? <laughs> nice viewing. Okay, I only want to patch up this one side. Kind of pull it over. There we go. Gonna take from that side because it looks really perfect right now. So just take that. We'll put the flowered part to the inside. Just gonna press that. Sew it up. And you wanna keep the pie dough the same thickness too. So as I'm like pressing it in, I'm also pressing any excess up and out so it's not super super thick otherwise it's not gonna bake even at all okay we'll trim it up and that's the thing is like once you have the filling in and you put the pastry top on no one is gonna know the difference i'd way rather do that than have pastry extra at the end okay so we'll pop all of this just back up here just in case we want to use it for something else. I don't know. Keep the area organized though. Okay, now we'll roll out a few more bases. I think I'm going to pop some of these shells. Maybe we can stack them. Just put them in the fridge. Welcome to the Tender Flake Factory. We play basketball sometimes. <laughs> okay, how many more are we gonna get? So I got these four tins here for ourselves. Let's fill those next. How many are we making today? We only need four to go out the door. We're making a couple for my grandparents. So total we need is six and then whatever is left over for us. So if we get 10 pies, I'll be really happy. It's really not bad scoots, no. Even like tomorrow for the orders, it's really not bad either. It's nice and spread out. Not a busy, busy one. And that's okay. I'm okay having weekends, like, not back to back insanely busy. Because next weekend is going to be a busy one again. We have our, our front page slot on the Saturday. And we already know that we're making pizza. And I'm sure we'll get lots of orders for it again. Because there was some people that missed out last time. So we have some pre-orders already which I am okay with that. Oh yeah, my grandma, she loves when we come and drop her stuff. Like we always usually bring her and her neighbor a pack of bacon. We're gonna see them every two weeks until we leave. So like this Tuesday we went over there and grandma, grandma made us breakfast. I helped her cook breakfast for the four of us. It was awesome, really, really fun. 
Who said pot? Pie? Yeah, a pizza stream on the front page means like, I'm gonna be away that day. <laughs> Just saying no. I'll be fine. It was okay last time. Do you run a catering business then? Pretty much jam session. A small scale catering business, just for our friends and family though. We call it more of a supper club, if you will. It's like if you know, you know, and if you don't, well, you're not invited, sort of thing. Just to keep it small, we don't wanna get too, too big. Okay, trim. Thank you. And yeah, when when we get the food truck all built, then it'll be legit. A traveling catering business at that point. Yes. is the hardest part of the pot pies. All my Edmonton jerky got delivered. Yay! Which means Torino should be getting his pretty soon then. I think Torino's got delivered as well. <laughs> Sweet. Yes, yeah, we're gonna be bringing the stream into the food truck, great question. So we've already signed up for Starlink. So that should be able to help us out wherever we go. And then we'll also be streaming the entire build of it together too. So that's something to really look forward to. If you've always wondered like how a food truck comes together. Call it gypsy catering. I actually love that, Daph. That would be yeah. <laughs> I really, really like that one. Yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for names, we are taking some. Because I'm sure Disney already uh, trademarked the plus thing, so we can't just call it Cook with Kate Plus. Because I think that would actually be pretty sweet. Cook with Kate Plus, eat her food. That's good, Sammy? Yeah. You only want food residuals. <laughs> Look at the fat streaks. Will we ever cross the border? We have hopes that we'll be able to. So we're gonna try to build it so that we can travel across borders with it. So yeah, it's definitely gonna take a few months to really get it built properly. Cause that's the thing, if you're building something, you want it done right the first time, you don't wanna be stressing out later down the line and be like, oh, we should have done this or we should have done that. Great. Take your time, make sure it's what you need and then we'll be on our way. So yeah, we'll do a test run all around Canada first. Even see if we like it. Maybe it'll be something that we're like, you know what, maybe this is just not, not for us. So yeah, we'll test it in Canada first and then plan out a trip to the States. And that's gotta be when Rona is over anyways. With the Starlink word of warning, it doesn't like heavy rain or heavy cloud. Also, snow is a heck no. That's something good to know. Thank you for that. But I've been doing that since I've had an express view. Yeah, Sam. So Sam grew up with satellite dishes. 
like that so he knows exactly what to do so that's good we'll just make a bot then instead of doing a screen yeah Stacks on stacks. Yeah, Sammy got a fancy strain this week. Oh my gosh, Mickey. Yeah, you're up late still. Have a wonderful sleep, my man. Take care of yourself, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for our Greek feast stream. Okay, I'll do one more. Or you know what, guys? Do you think we'll be able to reuse this? Might be able to get two from it. And then I don't have to open up any more crusts that I made. We also want to make sure that we have enough for the top. Do, 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 do. Two, four, six. Probably do two out of this one. Eight. Okay. We'll try and reuse all of these scraps then. Just move that up. Have a good night, Mickey. And this is why we don't just crumple this into a ball, because then you're overworking the gluten. And then you're messing up also like the layers of the crust. You won't get the same flaking. But it's okay to tear it if you need to do that. I'm trying to guide you guys right now. And then those ones, we'll just discard that. We'll chalk that up as a loss. Now if we can, kind of just tuck in some of the corners form it into a little disc and then I'm gonna try and go oblong so we can get the two two pie pans like that cut from dough surgery yeah how cool is this view <laughs> plexi insane thanks for that follow And yeah, these ones are just for us anyways, so it's okay. I'm gonna flip it. Yeah, that looks way better. Look at that. So once again, roll to quarter inch thick. Make sure it doesn't stick as we do that because I totally felt it. Give it a little run around in the flour. We can go again. Turkey? Are you from Turkey, Plexi? Vion, I still have your postcard from Turkey. It's on my little whiteboard calendar. True. Sammy sees it. It's true, it's true. Well, didn't that just work out perfectly? <laughs> it seriously looks perfect. Okay, we should be able to fit both of those. Oh, easily. It's so cool. Hey, I thought it was cool when I received it from you. I was like, this is super cool. Okay, we'll do a little bit on this edge to start. Since there's more dough. Over there. There we go. Work that down into the tin. Oh man, it was so perfect. Look at that. And next one.
I'm in the pie zone. Okay, we'll trim up these last two and then I guess we're ready to fill and then we'll roll out the, all of the toppings, cover them up and then we'll get ours into the oven and while it's baking we can finish off the salad. And that's how you waste a very minimal amount of pastry. That's crazy. I've never had that little. I'm very proud of myself for that even. I just hate wasting food. so awesome oh cinnamon sugar crust yeah that's I usually do that with this scoots we'll do it with any of the extra from the top how about that it'll be better okay so we're just gonna move this whole area together just out of the way for now while we fill we don't need that here also the reason why I did it on the board because it kind of just keeps a clean workspace if we need to switch the task. We shouldn't need the dough scraper anymore. I'm just gonna give my hands a wipe as well as my apron, it's a bit floury. Yes, Lauren, yeah, the dressing alone when we made it, you're 100% sure that I'm gonna have a nice yummy salad tonight. <laughs> yeah, what's this salad? Is that some stuff with the green things in it and then you feel like a rabbit while you're eating? Yes, that is a salad. Are you not friends with salad, Presto? Is that what you're telling us right now? Presto does not make friends with salad. <laughs> Salad is your new fave. Yeah, I'm getting back into the salads as well, Vune. Winter time though, I'm not a huge salad fan. It's like I really have to force myself to eat salad in the winter. Why is it like that? I think because we just crave the heavier stuff that warms us up. Okay, that's all cleaned up. So the four not so nice little tins are for us. Actually, you can see basically everything here. I'll go grab the filling. And the other tins. So it's always so much quicker if you do the repetitive tasks back to back. Remember this stuff? Remember that goodness? Smoked turkey wild mushroom with mirepoix and peas and herbs. Just gonna give it one more mix because there's some of the broth in the bottom. Wanna have nice even scoops. And I'm gonna switch to not a slotted spoon either. So wipe all the goodness off of this one. If you make a salad, it's not healthy because you just pour a blue cheese dressing on it. Yeah, fair enough. At least you know. At least you know, right? Oh, sorry. I'm gonna put that up there because I feel like you guys wanna see as I fill them. And some of the pastries are warming up a bit for the tops, so I'm just gonna pop them in the fridge. Don't want them to get too warm. So it will be a pain to roll out after. Yeah, don't die. Okay, 
so these ones are ours nice big scoop for sure through the bottom and up so you get all of the juices that we want here keep in mind as this rebakes again though is it'll get juicier and then don't worry about it getting watery that's why we did a little sprinkling of flour in the mixture when we added the broth so that's how that should look <laughs> Nom. That looks fantastic. Thank you. Like I said, I just really like making pies. It was not a thing that I was into when I was like a chef in restaurants. But now that I've been cooking more at home, I kind of fell in love with making pies. Whether they're savory or sweet. I don't know. There's just something like magical about the pastry. Holy, you guys are losing all of the bones. No bones to be had. Yummy, those lobster mushrooms. It finally betrayed you. <laughs> Sometimes it'll get you like that. No way that that's not good for you okay those stacked up really good in the fridge like that so I will keep that in mind for future stack your pythons <laughs> true Ian. we're not part of the upper crust yes that was a good one too <laughs> Okay, our four pies separate from the other ones. If we have no extra filling, I will be so happy. You're gonna have extra filling. Dang it. Not much though. May uh, maybe. I think I'll have enough to make two. Two more after? Yeah. Oh my gosh. The travesty. Even just the sound of the filling is delicious. Thank you, Creep. I love that. The mixing sounds. Some people really get off on that. But you can kind of tell, like, by the sound of it, it's like, yo, that's going to be good. Did you turn it on? No, nope. you want it on? I just got to roll the top crust, but then, like, we can bake ours. Okay. So pretty soon. Okay. So 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> ASMR mixing sounds. Is there... Does that exist yet on YouTube? Like a, an ASMR food channel? Where it's just sounds of food? Is that a thing yet? Or do we have to corner the market ourselves? That's what I'm thinking. I'm asking chat. Just have a pan of frying bacon and have the sound for it? Yeah. Sleep Sounds by Kate. It's really quiet, so chat's looking. Chat's doing some digging. <laughs> you have no idea. I've never heard of one or found one yet, so that's why I'm like, maybe it doesn't exist. Okay, we're totally gonna have extra filling, but I'm sure our friend Zach will be happy because he's uh, been hunting. I could offer it to Paul and all you to just go buy a pie shelf. No, I'm sure he would say no, Sam. She'll just be like, can you just make it for me? <laughs> okay, so that's what we have left, but 
total we made 10 pies that's awesome yeah just stir mac and cheese oh my gosh the sounds of that for eight hours fire kitchen is on there oh they are yeah i don't mind fire kitchen i can easily just sit down and get zoned into that you know instead of a liter container i think we'll just end up vacuum sealing this after stream because it packs really nice and flat to go back into the freezer and yeah all we got to do is thaw it and then put it back into the pie crust okay so that's gonna go into the fridge Never mind, Nike. Oh, thanks, Fion. Yeah, I'll have a sip of water right now. Been getting a bit carried away. And Almazan Kitchen? I've never heard of that one indoctrinated. There's one called Cooking Tree. Most of the food ASMR you've seen is mukbangs. Yeah, which is not, it's not my favorite either. Oh, Anavar, yeah, cook some penne and then just make some pasta with the filling. That would actually be really, really good too. Good idea, really, really great idea. What an easy fix. And hello, Zeri Ronnie, welcome in. Hope you're having a good day. All right, so we got our 10 pies all filled. Let's switch back to our rolling station. Bring our board back over and the rolling pin. We got our flour still here. And then the only other thing we need is a small bowl just with water. And that's how we seal up or glue on the top crust, let's say. So you want that prepped and ready to go. You're Italian, yeah, I put pasta in everything. Hey, I am okay with that. I heckin' love pasta. Nothing against that one. Oh, it's Chef Negan's mom chat. Hello, Chef Negan's mom. I am doing really good today. Thanks for asking. I hope you are having a good Friday so far. We heart the moms. Okay, so I'll just be grabbing the little toppers from the fridge. They were getting a touch warm. And I'm going to try to roll it, instead of keeping it round, I'm gonna try and roll it oval to see if we can get two, two tops out of the one pastry. Oh, lemon pasta sauce with prime rib, yum scoots. I'm gonna turn that. get a bit more width I'm gonna flip it again because I wanted to stick one more swirl in the flour and a bit on top okay now we'll go this way Oh, it's gonna be cutting it close. But you never know though, if we're able to cut off this amount, then we can do like half and half maybe. I guess we'll see. We'll top all of the, the nice pies first and if we ended up having a funny one for us, that's okay. It's very close though. Like that only really needs to sit on the top and same with that. Wow, guys. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more. Just around the edges, cause it is a bit thicker there still. That would make me so happy. 
Yeah, a bit more, Scoot says. That's what I thought too. Okay, that'll be like literally perfect. Let's see. First thing we gotta do is just take our, I just have the water bowl just popped in front of the board here so I can just reach down and dip my finger in, go around the edge. Maybe I'll actually post it up on the corner closer. This is our glue. There we go, keep all the filling inside. Now I'll just kind of dry my hand for a moment. What's up? You could easily do that, BC. Literally just take a little bit more stock and turn it into a soup. Throw some potatoes or rice into it, you're done. Oh, it's okay, we'll cut out all the vents afterwards. We need to vent it, otherwise this will explode. So now that we got the top on, I'm just slowly going around the edge, crimping it up. You can see some of the peas poking through, that's okay. We'll do the next one while we're here. Thank you for the follow, Liba360. Welcome in. Yeah, lemon and pasta, like chicken piccata, so dang good. And yeah, Sam already answered your question, BC. So there's that. Okay, paring knife is still handy. So now we go all the way back around. I'm so happy that we got two tops out of the one crust. Winning. The baby pie. That worked pretty well, hey? And we need a fork. And I'm also gonna go for one other thing here for myself. A very small cookie cutter for the middle vent. I'm gonna see if I can stab through that top pastry with <laughs> the very, very small one. So we should be able to just go right through the center. If we press down and just twist, and then we'll be able to just pick that out. And we make the vent like that and get back in there, you sneaky pee. So that the steam can escape as it bakes. Otherwise it'll build up and you'll blow right through the pastry crust. And I don't know why, but for like chicken pies, I like to do the round. You usually just do a slit. Yeah, I just thought it would look a bit nicer for our friends. And now we just take our fork, go all the way around. I totally like, I can kind of feel my grandpa is watching me make these. Every time I make pies, my grandpa from my, my French side of the family, it's like, I know he's watching and he'd be proud because he was a really good cook too. That's what you said last time. I know. I feel it. You feel it? Yeah. Grandpa George. Now we'll just even up those edges one more time. That is almost too perfect. <laughs> okay. I swear it's homemade. That looks really good. <laughs> Thank you, Kanara. You're such an old... 
I really am an old soul, chat. I might be a young person, but I swear. Definite old soul. She's way older than I am. Way older than Sammy. Must be in my 40s by now. <laughs> I love pies. Yes, I do. Okay, I'll top ours next so that those can go in the Traeger. You started it up, my knee? Yep. So the Traeger is preheating right now. 375 Fahrenheit is the temp we're going with to bake these. And I think like 20, 25 minutes, we should be done by that time. Next topper. There's this. I'm just gonna pop those two other pies in the fridge for now. And then it's up to you whether you want to do an egg wash on top or not. The egg wash just adds a little extra richness, I would say and some browning, but that's about it. Just doing a bit of organization here for myself. Fit these beautiful pies in without damaging them. There we go. Do I ever make these and freeze them to cook later? So I am doing this, this batch, Canara, as we made a few extra to see how they would just freeze up like that. Oh, you had another dough? What? I thought you had no, oh yeah, you need all the tops, Never mind. Yeah, they're all in the fridge, it's okay. So yeah, we'll freeze it raw like that, but all the filling is cooked through. So even after it's been frozen and thawed, all we gotta do is bake the pastry and heat it through until the filling is hot. That's it. And thank you, madame. <laughs> One person raid. Thank you very much for that. That means she has done her day. Go celebrate Friday. Thank you for the raid and the host. And hello, Azrael. Welcome in. I hope you are doing well. Oh no. <laughs> Good thing I was paying attention. Get those out of there. That's what's messing me up. Do a little shimmy around to make sure it's not sticking. We're still good. I think we're almost there. really cutting it close on that end but let's see okay we got a bit more wiggle room on the other side so yeah I'm good with that there and we'll cut closer to this one there we go And now first thing we want to do before we pop the top on is we just need our bit of glue here. So it's just water in a bowl. Dip your fingers in and rub that around the edge. Hey, you got a sub for Monday. That's good. Been trying to get one for three days, but there were none available. Well, that's nice. So now you can have a longer weekend and really rest up then. Hey, madam, I'm happy to hear that for you. Because, yeah, teachers have a lot of pressure on them. 
It's like, how dare you be unwell? <laughs> Shomer Mall. I used to not cook because cooking takes too much time. Having watched these streams have made me change my mind as I now know that cooking not only takes time, it requires having an attractive woman doing the job for you. Hey, proudly given up on cooking and you regret nothing. Well, I hope that you have a woman that does that for you, but like we, it doesn't have to be a woman. That's assuming people's gender. We don't do that here. I think as long as you enjoy cooking, that's what is most important. Yeah, Cornish pasties. So dang good. <laughs> Lauren. <laughs> Lauren's just like, pardon? Pardon me right now? Cooking and cleaning are basic life skills. They are not determined by your gender. <laughs> Maj, thought you'd stop in and say hi between watching Happy Chef and watching Chef the Party getting ready for his front page. Oh, we better finish up then. We got stuff to go watch, hey? Me, oh my, it's a busy one. Yeah, I can't wait to go see how Happy Chef did on the Twitch Rivals page. He did really well. Yeah? Yeah, I've been watching it. That's good. His cooking sessions at the beginning was awesome. He did a zucchini, uh, fried zucchini, like shaved really thin. Okay. Uh, some cherry tomatoes and shrimp and just dressed it really nicely. Yummy. Like an appetizer. Yeah. He did it down in 15 minutes of what they needed. Yeah. And then, uh... Yeah, he's just been commentating with the other two people the entire time. Yeah, Sweet. Now we need the vent. Sneaky mushroom in the top of that one. And now we crimp the edges. Team Bonin is all over the place, yeah. I saw that she did a Mexican themed stream, Maj. It looked like everything turned out really well. But yeah, there was no way that I was staying up that late, sad to say. And then, yeah, I like to just go around afterwards and like tuck it back in, keep it nice and round. Mmm, peach yogurt, so yummy. Yeah, a sleep schedule. <laughs> I really have to stick to mine, my sleep schedule. That's a really important one for me to be like able to do all of the things that we do. Sleep is a big priority for me. Okay, so these are our two. Are we just baking one right now, Sam, or you want both in? Uh, what you feeling? I would just do the one for now. Just the one for now for us? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Traeger's probably ready? Uh, probably? Oh, the camera is not outside anymore. Okay. Uh, all the batteries have died, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guys, we got no more batteries for the outdoor cam. That's fine. All right. Well, I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to pop it into the oven. So 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Why don't we check it after 10 minutes? Does that sound good? I think that sounds good. And yeah, you know you're getting into it when you're getting flowery. Yeah, freeze them. We are going to test freeze some of them and see how they pack up. I'm excited, Maj. 
Also, we gotta test the pie before we feed it to other people, too. Looks like it stopped raining. Wow. It says 355, so I'll just turn that up. 375. It's a bit cold right now. It's only at 240. I don't know why. Maybe it's heating up a touch still. Okay, well, I'm gonna just let that do its thing because pastry in a not hot enough oven will just melt and fall apart. So I'll give that about five minutes. And then we'll get our next crust ready while we're waiting for that. Could you vacuum seal and freeze them? You totally could. Yeah, you totally could. Like you could potentially send frozen pies overnight if you wanted that route. We got options. Okay, we only have six more to top. We're doing great. 28 Celsius where you're at? Whoa. And yeah, we do have a good fridge. We don't, and I guess the freezer too, it has like a, a quick freeze little button on it. Not necessarily the legitimate blast chiller. Okay, we'll roll this out and then we'll pop back out and get that pie in there. Got a little parsley piece. Do our little test fit. More than enough. Trim it. And then we'll get our little bit of glue on and then we'll pop back out because then I'll wash my hands. But this is the thing, like if you're gonna make pot pies, make extra ones for yourself. Don't just go through all of this labor and time to have like two pies at the end of it. Make enough for 10 so that you can freeze them. They're great little gifts to give away to your friends too. I would appreciate getting that. Seal it up. Oh, that hand's a bit messy. <laughs> There's herbs on it. Okay, we'll trim it up. What's the glue made of? Water. The scraps of dough, I usually just bake up like that and munch on them. Or like Scoot said, you can sprinkle with some cinnamon sugar and have a sweet, a sweet treat from it. I've done that before. It's worth it. Okay, 
right, we're gonna stop there for a moment. Thank you, JB. You could also use egg wash to seal it up, Lauren, if you wanted. And then I was saying earlier, so the egg wash on the top, it'll help it brown up and it'll also give it like a little bit of sheen. So it'll make it a bit shiny. But I've baked many pies without egg wash on the top and they come out great regardless. I think it's just this dough recipe in particular. It doesn't need the egg wash. But if you have eggs to use up, by all means, go for it. And the egg wash, all you do, so you take a whole egg, you whip it up, and you can dilute it either with water or milk. Yeah, the proteins, exactly. Okay, I'm gonna bring that, or put that pie in. Put our one pie in, and then we'll set a timer. Oven should be good. Yeah, that's better. 320. Right in the bottom middle rack. Do 10 minutes on the clock. Should be able to finish off the rest of the pies in that time. Okay, we gotta make our vent with our little cookie cutter. And now we crimp the edges. We're just a pie factory today, friends. Not been too, too long of a stream though, considering all the stuff we made. Pie, cookies, salad with homemade dressing. Homemade everything. Looks like two eyes looking at you, kind of, hey? Don't peek at the pies. Yeah, I could see us making these, having them in the freezer, all packaged and labeled up for people to just take and bake. I am in. So that's going into the fridge. How are you doing today, little baby kittens? <laughs> that always sounds so cute when I say that. It's like I just want to be petting all of these baby kittens. How 
how you can tell your crust is a touch cold when rolling, it will crack around the edge. It will try to crack on you. Quite thick on this one end. Is that going to cover two pies? One, two. Yes, it will. Do your water dip to get the top crust to stick. There we go. Take that and put it on top. Give it a little press. The first pie though? The first one is, yep. Uh, I don't know when Paul wants his, so you can offer any time if you want. I just need about half an hour heads up. Like he, it's not too late for him to come at 4.30 if he wanted to come earlier. I like the little pea that we can see sticking out of the pastry there. <laughs> the food truck boys got their jerky. Nice. Do the vent. Next. And then there's only two left. Once again, just tuck in those edges. So awesome. You paid 10 bucks for one of them? Yeah, that's what I would think about charging as well. 10 bucks with everything homemade in there, Nike. If you said that you would pay that, then that gives me a good idea. Back into the fridge. You missed the answer to Lauren's question. You'll throw in egg milk mix. Sorry to make me peat repeat. So, like egg and water wash versus just egg or just water. I always do a mixture into the egg. 
I would think that the egg on its own would be kind of like a scrambled egg, the way that it would bake up. So yeah, either do water for the cheaper alternative or do milk or cream if you wanted it like a bit more rich. But I'm just using the water as like a glue to seal the top onto the bottom. That's all I'm doing there. Okay, one more piece of pastry. Feels good. There is one and a half minutes on the timer before we go check our one pie outside. Kinda try to use up all this flour that we already have here since this is the last one. Away we go. Just gonna tuck in that edge back into itself. There we go. Now that'll roll more evenly. Wanting to stick just a touch here. You can see where there's lots of fat on this one edge. There she is. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick dust off for myself. I'll be right back. I've only ever seen anyone do it except Happy Chef do like an egg wash on the top. Yeah, I've made many pies without the egg wash on top and they always turn out. Oh man, it's actually looking amazing already. Okay, for sure another 10 minutes. But yeah, the crust is really happy. Nothing's falling apart. So that'll be the 20 minute mark after that. It might take the full half hour, we'll see. That's why I'm baking mine early. Ooh, that was good. Yeah. Are you gonna say something to me? I messaged Paul, I don't know if I asked him what time he would like his dinner. Okay. I said it's got a 30 minute cook time. Yeah. Okay, the last two should fit no problem. Yup, yup. Beautiful. Still living there on the other side? Mm, not that I know of. Why, did you hear something different? Oh, just an egg only wash. Oh, Happy Chef did egg only? Yeah, I've never seen that before. It might have been a specific style of pastry that he did that for, who knows? But I've never experienced anything like that. These last two are for us. So there's that. Done and done. So line that up with the edge. Give it a press with the clean hand. Then we trim. Oh yeah, cookie. It's looking so dang good. I can't wait to try it.
Do 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 hey. Next step is the vent. And then we crimp. Even out the edges, tuck them back in. Thanks, Peak. Yeah, you've been hanging out with us like all day. And thanks to everyone who has been here all day with us. Learning all the best tips and tricks about how to make pot pie. Definitely better than anything you can get from a grocery store. I know that some like butcher shops or bakeries make their own pot pie, so that could be something to look out for. But yeah, for the most part, you gotta just make it yourself. Okay, that feels amazing, guys. We're done. We're done. I'm gonna pack up the pastry. We're not gonna bake that rest of that together. I'll get those other two pies just in the fridge and then I can wipe up. So I ended up with three, three little pie crusts left over. So that's something to note. Five o'clock for Paul. Five o'clock for Paul, okay, that's so easy. <laughs> There's just like pies all over the place here. I love it. Pies everywhere. Not too, too messy either. Just the usual. Don't even really have anywhere good to put this board. Should be sturdy. If you hear a crash, that was the cutting board. <laughs> hey, Lazy got a negative COVID test. That's so good to hear, dude. And thanks for popping in and letting us know. Cause yeah, we're all worried about you. I'm so happy to hear that. And it's so nice that they get the test done quickly like that too. Very happy for you. I know how scary it is. Like when I was still working, doing rentals for people's houses, I had to get two tests. I got tested twice. Oh my gosh. Oh, they're doing the nose ones still? Wow. Yeah, both of the times that I got tested, I just did the, the gargle test. I lucked out. No brain swab for me. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I swear some people that are doing it, like they're doing that shit on purpose. I don't really see the reason that it's gonna go up that dang high. <laughs> but hey, I'm not a nurse, so what do I know? I've just heard the horror stories. Okay, most of the flour has been cleaned up. I'm just gonna give our, our rolling pin a little wipe. Michelle P, thank you for that follow. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like instant blood. That's crazy, man. The frick?
All right, quick little packity pack up. Put my flour away, put my extra pastry bits away. And then it's salad time. It's a bit of flour on the fridge handle here. Fridge door, you know where I was. Follow the Kate trail. <laughs> where are the flowery handprints? Okay, let's get a bowl out for the salad. I think it'll look good in a dark bowl like this. The contrast of the green olive dressing. Yeah. I'm gonna grab our greens. A spinach and spring mix. Should be all good. So this is what I got from the store this week. Organic spinach in spring. Triple washed. Watch your ears. It's usually loud when I open this. Yeah, that's a good mix. Mmm, it actually looks fresh and not just wilted. Look at that. It's a yummy mix, Lauren. I've never tried this one. Okay, there's a few pieces snuck in the middle. I hate when they do that stuff. So we'll be picking through a bit of it. I did get lots of extra greens for that reason. I don't know why, but this brand in particular, the Earthbound ones, they always go bad quick. Whereas there's another brand that I usually get from Costco. I just didn't get it this week. Definitely stays fresher longer. So yeah, just kind of pick through as you're putting your lettuce in the bowl. No slimers, no slimy lettuce allowed. And I do find it is these little leaves that go bad the quickest. <laughs> like once it starts, you can't really stop it. And then once that leaf starts to go bad, then it's kind of like a cancer in the middle and it'll just make everything else around it go off. That was a super loud sounding beep, wow. Okay, gonna go quickly peek at the pie. It does have those little bits. It's hard to not get those little bits. As someone who has worked at an organic farm, it's hard to not get some of those pieces going bad quickly. Oh man, that's looking good. The only thing I don't love of the Traeger is it puts little black bits of stuff onto the top of the pastry. That's baking really nice though. It'll definitely be, I think, a half an hour cook. Or maybe I gotta turn up the heat. I am going to decide right now. I think I'll turn it to 400 for the last like 10 minutes is the pie is not even golden brown yet. Give me a moment. That could be a good way to bake it. The first 20 minutes we do a bit lower at 375. And then the last 10, we kind of crank it up. Okay, I'll reset the timer. 10 minutes. And then we should be good. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry that you can't see it. All of the batteries have died for the gimbal. Oh, including the gimbal died. I thought it was like powered up, I guess not. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, that's enough salad for me. Yeah, like even on the top parts. So many sneaky bits. We'll grab our bottle of dressing. Dress it on up. It's looking dang good. It's separated a bit as it sat in the fridge, but still, like we just gotta mix that, give it a shake up back together. My new favorite salad dressing. I wouldn't keep this for no longer, let's say, than two weeks, Lauren. And even that's kind of pushing it a bit. But because of all the fresh ingredients, so the fresh garlic, there's fresh herbs in there, uh, lemon zest as well, no longer than two weeks for that stuff. Is the oil will like kind of preserve it and the bit of salt and vinegar in there. But you will notice after those two weeks is it won't taste as good anymore and then you like less likely to eat it. <laughs> so try and use it up within two weeks. And yeah, we bought lots of greens, so that's why I made a big bottle for us. Yum. It is thick too. Like it pours super nice. because of the olives in it, it has a nice little chew. Not quite ready yet, Suki. So we're just gonna have some of the salad, try out our dressing first together while it's finishing baking. I think I'm gonna take a quick photo of this so I can post it online since everyone's kind of raving about this dressing now. gotta get that ringer off like the sound of the ringer is kind of freaky to me it's a bit aggressive that's a good view can I get that again portrait yeah okay Nom, nom, nom. Do I have a steak and shake where I live? I don't. What is that? What's a steak and shake? Black Lives Matter, you gotta fill us in here. It's like you just get steaks and shakes? Yeah, the moment in public when you take a photo and the photo noise goes off. Yeah, it's so awkward. Okay, let's mix this up. Sammy, do you just get steaks and shakes? What's this all about? What is this madness? Also, the dressing is sat for a bit, right? So it probably tastes better than when we first tasted it earlier. And yes, those are the recipes for you today, indoctrinated. Um, here, the, the dressing recipe is not linked. Just gonna copy paste for you real quick. There's the other one. Just we've used it before already, so it was already in Discord. Don't like making those links too, too long for us. All right, that looks nicely mixed. I'm gonna go in for a nice big bite. Health. Mmm. Much better than the first one. Whoa! It's kind of tangy, but I love it. A good bite of garlic in there, too. Not that, not so much of a bite of garlic that that's all you taste, but it's definitely back there. They sell cheap burgers and shakes that are better quality than you'd expect. Ooh, I hope you can try it one day. I love burgers and shakes. 
<laughs> everything looks so good yeah i hope you try it out and let us know how it goes too if you need any help you can feel free to message if we're not streaming that day but yeah this is good the crunch of the lettuce is really good the dressing is like bright and fresh you would never ever know that there's olive in it you don't taste it at all mm. i really love the lemon yum and then to tease you guys a bit more I'll show you our tray of cookies that Sammy helped us make today. They all turned out really good, the peanut butter cookies. Mm -mm -mm. All right, we got three minutes on the clock before we go check our pie. Steak and Shake is all over the US. I don't think it exists in Canada. Really didn't make much for dishes today, so I can get behind that. Pack up our little cookie tin. Yeah, your favorite shake is a little unconventional chocolate peanut butter. I like either strawberry or cookies and cream. Sammy is like a butterscotch or salted caramel guy for sure. Sometimes cookies and cream, I would say. Rare occurrence. Yeah, there's been a few people that passed in the last couple of days, Maj. Ooh, banana peanut butter shake, yeah. Some people call that like a chunky monkey or a funky monkey shake. It's really good. Okay, two minutes. That's all we gotta wait. And hopefully that pie is done. I'll grab a plate to put it onto because it's gonna be hot, 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 hot. And I'm gonna take my last break, so hold tight. Okay, now we only have 50 seconds. <laughs> I feel like I have salad all over. You can freeze some sliced bananas, blend it with a dollop of peanut butter. Tell you what, it almost tastes like a milkshake. That sounds really good, Rafuels. Those bananas back there, you're saying? Happy Chef is struggling. It's 1 a.m. his time. Whoa, he has no clue when the rivals will be over. Oh, really? I thought there was an end time for it. Dang, well, he's working. He's working today. That's good, though. That's like really good exposure for him, I would say. Yeah, he's getting tired. He's with Don Kido. Mmm. <laughs> That sweet, sweet sound. Sometimes we can't stand the sound of the timer, but in this instance, should be happy. Okay, I'm gonna go see if we can grab our pie. This is the half an hour mark. Just waiting for the pastry to be cooked through. And all the filling to be hot. Oh 
baby, she is looking pretty dang good. Five more minutes. So now we also know that we'll bake the pies a little bit higher heat. Yeah, I'm combing through. So we can do 400 the whole time. We're just waiting for the top pastry to bake through a little bit more. Because it is golden, but I can feel it's a touch soft still. So we'll have a couple more bites of this salad. And then away we go. I know, I hope they're done. Mm. Come on. It's looking really good though, Kanara. Pastry is definitely gonna be flaky again, just judging by how it looks compared to last time we did all of the pies. We started at 375 Fahrenheit. I just feel like it's a touch low. So we'll go with the 400 and maybe that will cut down the bake time too. We won't have to go like 30, 36 minutes. Be able to do maybe less than 30 minutes, right? Oh, I'm sorry, Maj. Every time the timer goes off, you think it's the alarm on your oxygen concentrator. I'm sorry. Probably wouldn't go hotter than 375 currently. Just I, I've already done it for 10 minutes. Okay. Any fires? No, but I can see some flame. Okay. <laughs> what kind of setup is this? And yeah, the one thing that I've just noticed is there's been like lots of ash kind of popping up from the Traeger. So that kind of sucks because it's sticking onto the pastry. The well, best setup, Suki. That's how it's always going to be. I didn't feel like there was much last time though. When we did the pies. Maybe we'll really have to like vacuum it out well. Yeah, what, what kind of setup is this? Just the best one ever. Okay, let's see how this salad tastes after like sitting for a few moments with the dressing. And thank you, Suki, gifting the sub to a fellow food and drink streamer as well, Kanara. Welcome to the kitchen crew. It's so good to have you. She has like one of the coolest ovens you will ever see. And yeah, it does work too. And she's also West Coast. So yeah, maybe one day we'll be able to meet up in person. So good to have you though, Kanara. Oh my gosh, you even have an emote for it? That is legit. Yeah, she does. That's legit. I love that. Yeah, seriously appreciate that setup. Okay, I'm going for a salad bite. Serenity granted. Thank you for the follow. Welcome in. I hope you're doing well. Mm-hmm. New favorite salad. Like usually when I eat salad, it's like, oh, I gotta get through this salad. But that one is like, yeah, I just wanna keep eating it. Oh, you wanna come camping? Up north in Canada, eh? For sure, one day. Pulled extra butter for myself today, but I didn't end up needing it. So that's good. Okay, two minutes. Dose on the clock. Oh wow, I just read on my little like Alexa screen in front of me that Prince William was 99 years old, or Prince Philip. At least he made it up there. Am I able to just hook up the Epoch cam and hold my camera outside? I think I'm gonna do that with everyone. Let me just check this out. I didn't hear it connect though. Wi-Fi. 
Okay. Because just because the gimbal died doesn't mean that we can't see all the things. And just because I want to do this, it's probably not going to work. She ain't working. Fine then. Fine. But this is what it would look like. <laughs> Man. It's just one of those days, I guess, isn't it? All right, I'm gonna go check. We got 50 seconds on there. I'm getting impatient. Oh, uh -huh. Mine's coming out. Our friends is going in. Did you hear that rooster just now? <laughs> yeah, that's looking good. Oh yeah, she's steaming through, baby. we can use a little brush to just brush the bit of charcoal off. First pie is coming in. <laughs> yeah, tech problems on stream. That never happens. Never, never happens. Check it out. So it was steaming all the way through. So that's what I'm talking about. Just those little bitties. It's like maybe I can just use my little brush. Oh, look at that. Because I can't use my finger. It just kind of smashes it back on there. But it's like, come on, man. I got to take a nice photo of this. Why you got to do my crust like that? And if I hold it up, oh, I guess so now that it's on the plate, it's not gonna be hot, but like, look at the, the layers in the pastry. That's what we're looking for. Yum. So we'll just let that cool off for a moment before we get into it, cause I hate burning my mouth. So why don't I take a photo? Hopefully get just the good side. Yeah, the layers, right? Mm. That's why I keep using that pastry recipe, guys. Because it just turns out so well every single time. Two of Randy's <laughs> favorite things. Oh, I guess I got my fork there. Kind of crazy stuff am I talking about now? Can you imagine the filling in a green pepper and bake it? That could be good, Nike. I don't love stuffed peppers, particularly. But if you wanted to try it out, by all means, I would go for it. Why not? You never know if you don't try. Digging with a spoon. Oh, that, that might be a better idea, Kanara. Probably want a spoon for this so we can get some of the, the juices out of there. <laughs> I 
Oh, you went back to work on Monday? Oh, man. Okay, so should we go right for the center? Mmm. Yum. It's definitely juicy. It's a bit juicier than the last time we made it, but I think that's okay. I'd rather have that than have it dry. It is steaming hot, though. Smoked turkey, wild mushroom, pot pie. And hello, Greek! Thank you for the 15 months in a row, my man. Fellow Canadian, fellow West Coaster. Love it. How are you eating that that fast? It's so dang hot. Mmm. <laughs> You don't expect the smoky flavor, but it's super good. Yeah, I think I've burned my mouth on pot pies more than anything. Slash. That's good. Mm-hmm. Mmm. That's awesome. It's really good? Yeah. Good. I can't wait to eat that. Okay, I want a bit of this crust. That is yum me. And yeah, it's not actually that juicy. Mmm. That bite. Thank you, thank you, Cookie. <laughs> Evening out the food truck fund. Thank you for those biddies. 1,899. Totally wish that we could share this with you today. Yeah, hashtag yum me. We shared the recipe experience with everyone. That's yeah. That's the best that we could do. Yeah. So I've made the pie crust many, many times on stream. It's the same recipe that I always use from Sally's Baking Addiction. I have the typed up chicken and wild mushroom pot pie recipe that's my own. So that's in our Discord and PDF. So if you search for it, you'll find it. You can print it out for yourself, make it at home. And then just for a guideline, I also linked there the pot pie recipe from Babish Culinary Universe. Who else is for today? We got AM coming. At what time, 5.30? Yeah, she's picking up three. Okay. That's cold. That is cold though. Mmm. I'm gonna give you guys one more view to like the inside of it the goodness such a good crust recipe though my life will forever be changed from that <sighs> oh that is his name isn't it andrew ray aka binging with babish I don't mind him. I think he's done very, very well for himself, Lauren. Actually, yeah, I have nothing against Babish at all. If anything, I'm jealous of him. Let's say that. There's the honesty. <laughs> like, he has crushed it over the years. Because I started watching him when he was just starting out. So to see him now, very impressed. Yeah, perfect meal for a cold evening. Exactly, Cookie. So we got our warm pie. We got our palate cleansing and healthy salad to go along with it. Easy for digestion. And so we've been going since 11 a.m. Pacific Greek. So it's been a long one. You never watched him, Nike. Yeah, he's pretty good. I really like it. I like his voice. He explains stuff really well. His cheese hoagie Twinkie is a little sus though. Ooh, I've never seen that one yet. Like I said, I used to watch him. Now I don't really have that much time. Okay, I will also be free-ish after stream view and I just have to put together these couple of salads and then we can have a chat if you want. Yeah, basics with Babish. I've heard that one is better too. 
Okay guys, we're wrapping stuff up. We did it. We made our pot pies, turkey and wild mushroom. We did our salad with the green olive vinaigrette and we made some simple peanut butter cookies. That's definitely a well-rounded meal. Thank you, Kanara. Okay, sounds good, Vune, sounds good. You're not gonna lie, when you need to sleep and have racing thoughts, you put a live stream of him on making tacos. Boom! Lauren with the pro tips. Yeah, you too, Peek. And yeah, I'm sorry, Greek, that you're coming in like right at the end. <laughs> I hope you've had a good Friday so far though. Yeah, you too. Okay, where do we wanna go visit? Do we wanna bring more people into Chef de Partie for his front page? Or I see Deli Bakery is prepping a massive brisket. Playing a game, so no. Who? Granny's just playing Bella. Deli? Yeah. Oh, he's not prepping the brisket anymore? Uh, okay. I don't know how much longer Cosmic Cat's gonna be on or Miss Ruby's on. Okay, we can do Cosmic Cat. I've not rated Cosmic Hat in heckin' forever. Oh yeah, her pretzel croak and boosh. It looked incredible. She's about done, Kanara. Okay. Let's go see Miss Ruby Okay. We'll go see Katie. <laughs> Kate is visiting Katie. See what's going on at the Ruby household. Okay, I got that raid set up. Yeah. The only thing we can do is rivals. Oh. You could do rivals and spam the emotes in there. I'm in. Guys, we're gonna switch it up. Is it just Twitch rivals? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna go raid Twitch rivals. They're playing one of my favorite video games, the rare occurrence that I actually play. It's called Overcooked. <laughs> Sub raid, good one, Cookie. Yeah, thank you. Copy and paste the heck out of that. And so the main character in Overcooked is an onion. So I think we should actually go spam a bunch of onion emotes. And then we also have Happy Chef TV, so he's kind of hosting the whole thing. So I think that would be cool to bring you guys in, kind of see another area of Twitch. I also think it's very awesome that a video game is now contacting food streamers and having them on Twitch Rivals. So it's like kind of intertwining the food with games now. Can definitely get behind that. So yes, thank you friends for the wonderful day today. Everything turned out as it should have. I feel so good about it. We will be back tomorrow, so we're doing Greek pastichio, Greek salad, a pistachio cake. It's gonna be delicious. We're starting at 11 a.m. Pacific once again, so I hope you guys can come back for that. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful night wherever you are. Stay safe, stay healthy throughout everything, and we'll be on Discord if you need us. Thank you for the love today, friends. Bye. I'ma hit that button.